uncertain path to staying in office. The Republican Party is still two seats short of forming a government, as we hear from Lauren Lieberman in Jerusalem. First, Israel may well be in store for more political deadlock, and that's what it looks like right now, as nobody else has a clear path to 61. It also raises the possibility that Netanyahu's victory speech last night to an adoring, jubilant crowd may have been, once again, premature. I'm Michael Toscano. Today on Hey Culligan, cleaner, safer drinking water. We got Chris in Cleveland. Hey Culligan, I have a water pitcher. Is that safe? Uh, basic water pitchers are, let's say, passable, but a Culligan reverse osmosis system can do way more and help reduce lead, arsenic, something called pesticide runoff. Uh, hey Culligan? Yeah, Chris? Uh, I'll take one of those reverse. Uh... Reverse osmosis to get the most out of your drinking water? Chris, we're already on the way. Let us help you out with a free and home water test with a local Culligan water. What's up, people? How y'all feeling this morning? Take a moment, share the broadcast. It's feeling a little bit better today. What's up, Constance? What's up, Tiger? What up, Deborah? How y'all feeling this morning? Y'all take a moment, share the broadcast. Um, yeah, take a moment, share the broadcast. It's hotter than hell up in here. Um, but what can you do? What up, Barbie Bell? How you feeling? How you feeling this morning? What's up, Jonathan Boston? What up, Deborah Roberts? Hey, have you all liked the Maze Jackson page? Not just seen it, but liked it. Seen it, but liked it. Let me try to get Cam on at 7.30. Oh. No. I already reached out. Oh, you did? Good morning, Mr. Todd. Good morning. Leave it open until it's time to, it's hot in here. Hey! Tri-State to Lakeshore Drive. It should take you about 23 minutes over in the ice and how about 390 to the Oak Post Office. Looking at a travel time of about half an hour. Outbound 31 minutes. Kennedy O'Hare to downtown. It should take you about 32 minutes. 
over on Lakeshore Drive right now. No delays on either side. Sunny, mild, and windy today with highs in the upper 40s. Tonight, down to 27. It's currently 33 degrees. I'm Jennifer Thompson on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Infinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine! Wake up! 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 Rise and shine with the WVON Morning Show. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Featuring Mays Jackson. Do you understand? Ty, can you close that door? What you have to say? What you have to say? Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, man, I'm feeling great, Mays. Yesterday, I went to Thomas's Restaurant. What is Thomas's Restaurant? I thought you'd be like, oh, yeah. It's on uh, 87th and East End. Oh, de- oh no. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 87th and East End, is that the... You know what, I think I know that restaurant. Is it like a black kind of like dinerish thing? Yeah, it's a, a, a diner type thing. Yeah, you know, I used to I used to be think I was doing something when I went there, and then one day I went and looked behind the counter, and everybody was Asian. That was owned yeah, by Yeah, it's owned by you're right. Yeah, no, I was so like, I was pass. walking because you know it's crowded. There's no place to park. I'm walking, so I'm walking with a guy, and he's probably eighty something, and we're talking. And he's like, you know, uh, I forgot the guy's name. He's like, nah, I don't remember him. He said, yeah, we died. And I said, yeah, well, I've been coming here a long time. He said, I've been coming here about 50 years. He's like, man, you outlived him. But yeah, I lived in the neighborhood all my life. So it's nice to, to stop by a place instead of been there for a long time. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, I was thinking about that. You stopped by there. I would have had second doubts because uh, the coronavirus. I would have been like, uh, 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 uh. Oh, man, man. If you, see, uh, you know what? I don't know who who to trust at this point. But you know what? Before we go here, I'm going to do this. Let me say what's up to the rest of the WVOA Morning Show team. Let me say what's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? Okay, so I'm going to say what's up to Miss Sonia Escobar. Mm-hmm. I'm not blaming you. I'm good morning. Good, good morning. So, Todd, maybe you should go and check her out, figure out what's going on. <laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> I, you know, some days I swear I'd be like, what is the, you know. All right. So, that is Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom sweating it out. I am the host, Mace Jackson. Y'all know I, I really, I, I'm really debating wearing a shirt for the rest of this show. <laughs> no, seriously. I, I was sitting here in a wife beater. The whole morning because it is unbelievably hot in here, like really? un- unbelievably hot. Like I'm talking about great, uh, not not according to the glisten on your face. Oh really? Really? <laughs> right? It's like 
Oh my God, I feel like I'm in Africa, <laughs> but not the good kind. Hey, so that is Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Let me say what's up to Miss Jennifer. Let me excuse me, Miss Sonia Escobar. She's the music conductor of the Soul Play. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? I am. You know, I'm gonna tell you. It's like I, I'm gonna tell you. Like I, I, you can't even leave here with a meeting after. Because if you get dressed, you will literally sweat it all out. It's like, so I have like all my clothes in the car and I am here. I'm going to start doing my show in my drawers. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in here in boxers and a tank top tomorrow. And y'all are going to be like, what is going on? And when I stand up, y'all going to be like, this fool got on boxers for real. It is unbelievable. All right, that is the WVON Morning Show team. So let's do this. Uh, maybe somebody can fix the air conditioning, but we still got to take off. So let's get this thing up, up, up and away. Uh, we are 60,000 feet up in the air. And Todd, as I was telling you, as I'm looking down, uh, you know, with, with that, I don't know if we're going to allow, um, I don't even know who we allow on the soul plane anymore. Like, I don't even know who we're going to let fly. You know, if, but well, because, you know, I, the coronavirus is now across the entire world. And they, I feel like this is the Bill Gates plan to kill everybody. To depopulate the earth. Because Bill Gates, well, anyway, I'm Bill not going to go there. But, you know, Bill Gates says that the world is too populated and we need to cut down on a bunch of people. You know, Bill Gates is building a city in, in Arizona that's all smart, that's all connected. That Like, he bought a whole town and just said, I'm going to do the whole thing. That's pretty clever. Did you see Kingsman? No. Yeah, uh, it's a good movie. My favorite actors are Samuel Jackson. But it's really about that. It's about overpopulation and that uh, some people got to go. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man. Um, this is uh, this coronavirus. And then I, I just want to point this out. I want to point out how last week Mayor Lightfoot was like everything is over exaggerated and she got on the phone. Like, can I just tell y'all, stop. She got on the TV and she was like, Trump is over exaggerating. And now every channel you turn on, they're talking about somebody who's dying from the coronavirus. I'm just saying, no, she was like, and then, but look, they trying to tell you to, but then they tell you to come to Chinatown. China T, Chinatown people ain't coming to Chinatown. But they're going to tell us, and you know who the first ones will be out there. Let me get the black people. Man, you know they got special on Chinese food. Look, man, I'm telling y'all, I ain't playing with this coronavirus. I know they have these things. You know, they be like, what happened to MX4? And uh, what was the other one? Bird flu and all these other things that's happening. Look, oh, yeah. I'm not playing with none of y'all. I'm not playing with none of y'all. All right. Um, uh, I, hey, I took Claire to the doctor yesterday, and Claire was like, <laughs> man, there were two of them. You never saw anybody reach for mass so quick. <laughs> They're like, you want one too? I'm like, no, I think it's too late now. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all, it is. Um, I don't know. I just think it's it's this coronavirus is something, and I really hate. You know what I hate when they underplay stuff to try and make everybody. But meanwhile, they got their own bunker they can go into, <laughs> right? Like. You know, it's like they come out, do the press conference, and they'll be like, all right, put me back in my plastic suit, please. All right, y'all. Um, how about this one? Turn off the music. Moment of silence. In case you all do not know, if you did not hear, the first and only black Supreme Court justice in the state of Illinois. Uh, well, not the first and only. The first black uh Supreme Court Justice, Justice Charles Freeman, passed yesterday at the age of 84. Um, Justice Freeman was a trailblazer. He was the judge who swore Harold Washington in. Coincident, no coincidence, though. You know why it was no coincidence, right, Ty? That he swore Harold Washington in? No, it's not. You know why it wasn't a coincidence? Why? Because they both were Sigma men. Huh. <laughs> so, uh, just want to send a shout-out, an extra special shout-out to the black uh, judicial court um, and the black legal court right because Justice Freeman was kind of like the epitome of achievement as a black lawman does that make sense right like you, you don't really get much higher than the Supreme Court unless you in the state unless you go to federal court right right so Justice Freeman uh, was a history maker and I just he think was. that is important that we acknowledge his passing and I just I'll tell you the importance of his position. 
I called him and I said, I know a guy and he's really good attorney. And he said, you know, Todd, I look around at the other justices, they're not going to appoint any black people. I got to appoint black people. <laughs> and no, I, and said, I get you, brother. <laughs> and Justice Freeman took he, took that job seriously. He appointed uh, so many black judges who would not have ordinarily had a chance because the white folks would have been like, "You ain't qualified." Blah blah blah. Right. He did it. And let me just tell you, his legacy is tremendous. And what's so crazy is, black people are working to destroy. Think about that. Just think about that. I mean, you know when they say rolling over in his grave? Yeah. This is literally it right now. Literally rolling over in his grave as three black candidates get into the Supreme Court race. We know we can't get no black judges appointed. You got the white North Shore talking about getting rid of all merit, getting rid of merit selection. And the black people, the white folks were smart enough to figure out how to make the black people kill themselves. Uh, Justice Freeman, rest in peace. Yes. Hey, uh, let's talk Chicago 1690. We'll come back after traffic and the weather. Huh, I'm not wearing my contacts. Man, well, now that I got to know the contacts are hard. Darn contacts. I need to raise some money. I need a bus to go to Springfield tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, they just popped our bill into a committee hearing at 2 o'clock. Uh -huh. So I want to get off and get on the air and get down to Springfield. And find some, we got to find some people to testify. But I think that was crazy how they, you know, they did that slick. But I bet don't be surprised if it gets out of committee so people who got challenged could vote for the black people bill. Hmm. Yeah, there's always, there's always a reason for everything. Um, Are you coming tonight? What's tonight? North Beverly. Uh, probably. I forgot. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Hey y'all. Um. Man, I had some great responses to yesterday's four-year story. So many people were like, dang, man, I never knew. Dang, man, I never knew. And I'll be telling y'all, y'all be empowering bullshit. But so many people were like, I never knew. I never knew. Mm -hmm. Some people were like, they never knew, but they knew. Too. Right. It's like, oh, it's like three years later. And now it's like, I really, like I was talking about this and I was talking to a friend yesterday. And they were saying, she was like, I completely understand what you mean about everybody plunging the knife. Like, it's like being in a gang, and they say, you got to go kill somebody. And every, and if you want to be part of us, you got to take part in it too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I got some knife plunging to do is what I've decided. I've decided that um, there's going to be a consequence to it. That's what I've decided. Like, I think four years later, um, having gotten my feet up underneath me, having survived it, um, I think it's time to cut heads. I think that um, I think that I am smart enough politically. And looking around and realizing that all the people, like Madigan can't save all the people, right? Like he's going to be busy saving his life. So guess what yeah. I'm going to do? I'm going to come through the neighborhood and I'm cutting off all the people who was part of the thing. So be on the lookout. Keep cheesing. Keep taking pictures. You know what's funny? I'm 
coming. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. Bum, 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 bum. Got the hard way. Each and every day. <laughs> nothing yet. Cause I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, George <laughs> Trojan. <laughs> That was the remix. Uh, Ow, to, uh, 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 hey, time run through a couple more of these. Um, you see, uh, yesterday uh, Mayor Pete dropped out, and then bye, uh, Mayor uh, Amy Klobuchar dropped out bye. as well, and she is now endorsing. Uh, both of them are endorsing uh, Bernie Sanders. I mean, not Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden. Oh. Uh, I think the party is looking around, and we're going to talk about this at six thirty for the social media question of the day. But I think the party. Sees this death knell upon them. Uh, the party's death knell is, if, if, in my estimation, if Bernie Sanders wins the Democratic primary, not being a Democrat, the Democratic Party is done. I think you're right. Uh, it's a, unfortunately, it's a double edged sword. The uh, Bernie Crats will not vote if uh, he's not the nominee. They're going to do what they did last time, complain and, and why. But there are a good number of Reagan Democrats who will not vote for Bernie. Right. Um, and the Reagan Democrats are growing quickly. Um, excuse me, I like to call, as I refer to, Harry Woodleg white men. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, white people going to white, y'all. Did y'all see the story about Target? We're going to talk about that at 8.30. You see the story about Target? No. About the black yeah, I lady. To, I used to love Target when it was on Cottage Grove. I stopped messing with Target no, after <laughs> after Target pulled up out of all the black communities. Yeah. Then they put that ad on. Did you see the Black History Month about the honey, honey pot, which was a black feminine, hy- I feminine saw hygiene some kind products. Of attack on honey pot? And honey pot, first of all, ugh, what a name for feminine hygiene products. That's not honey. That's let me stop. Mm-hmm. Um, ew. Uh, but anyway, you can say what you want. I ain't saying nothing. Uh, okay, <laughs> but uh, white folks attacked like so. Target promoted that they were doing it, and white folks filled up their reviews with negative reviews so that nobody would buy their products. We should talk right. about that. Yeah, uh-huh. white people going white, man. White people can't bear to see black people have nothing. I'm gonna tell you. I will tell you. I think about how many like white folks be like, "Is that a good idea? Let me kill it." Yeah, let, me <laughs> let me stomp on your dream. Uh, you have a dream. You have aspirations. I'm a stomp on it. But it's interesting because I remember uh, Gene Mullins telling me that sometimes had something. You know, you know how they'll have something and then like, you have all the comments. Mm-hmm. So Gene put in a positive comment. He said they took the whole post down. <laughs> oh man, you read, man. Let me tell you what you want to see: racism in full effect. Read the comments after a sometimes or a Tribune story, like about something black. Uh huh. Like, let somebody be dead and get killed? Uh-huh. Oh, you want to see racism in full effect? You it's will see make it. your blood boil, huh? Yes. Yeah. Um, how about this one? The census. First of all, did you get any I'm census money? Me you know people people get any census money? Well. People be getting the hookup. I'm, I'm going to tell you, census become a new patronage drink. <laughs> I'm saying. Like, I, man, bro. I, well, I'm, there's a lot of census money. There's more census census money than there was when when I was uh, at the county. I think we had like 200 grand. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, this census money, man. It's like I'm looking around. Everybody got a kind of got some census money. I ain't got no census. They're money. talking, if I remember correctly, 29 million dollars throughout the whole state. That's a lot of money. I want to see the list. In between the city. Yeah, I want to see county, the list. Yeah, July, I'm gonna have me because I want to have a. I bet you. This is my thing. You know what'd be funny to me, man? The funniest thing to me is the people with the biggest platforms get the most. Was it because I'm not politically correct? You think that's what it is? Because I be looking like I mean I be thinking now, about. You know people. what it is like the lottery though? 
What? If you want to win, you got to buy a ticket. Okay, so well. You, you had to, you know. Apply. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying like this though. You know, they be calling people up like, "Yo, you should come get some." I seen it happen, Todd. Oh no, I believe. I, it. No, they be calling people like, "Oh, we got money, we giving it up, we gonna get a whole thing." And I was thinking about this, right? I mean, it's always the, "Hey man, you can do this job." Right, but I'm just saying, it's like it's funny because you know people would call me all the time to be like, "Mace, uh, this person did this." They be calling the snitch. They be calling to get me to blow people up. Nobody ever called me and say, "Hey man, why don't you come make some of this money?" So y'all want black folks to get counted? We got what's in it for the black people, and I see every Mexican and everybody else getting contracts, and, and I'm just saying, Mace, you know that's how people are. People been calling me for years since I left the county to help them, but don't help you. Yeah. Can you uh, help me do this? Can you talk to this person? Like, yeah, but I don't think they're going to listen. <laughs> you know, I just, I'll be laughing, man. It's like, I, I'm a t did we gonna, this is the same way the Democratic Party, right? Like, the Democratic Party ain't got, they got Zippo Zilcho, and then they be, they got the nerve to ex ignore the people that could get people's attention. Yeah. It's so funny to me. And then, and then it'll be like, but I'm the sellout. You know what? I'm going to talk about you. Yeah, I'm going to tell y'all what. I'm about to, for the next three weeks, this is what I'm going to do. Since since you don't want to call me, I'm going to tell you about it on air. Right? I'm going to be like, you missed something. There's a hole right there. I'm going to be like, there's a hole in the bucket because, you know, it's funny to me. I be looking at all the people. Can I tell y'all something? And I, I need for y'all to hear this, and I'm going to say it again. So all the people who were disrespectful. All the people who went out of their way to diss me and this, and I'm gonna leave my, I'm gonna leave the president out of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm a, but the people who felt like, remember I was telling y'all people felt like they could get points, um, taking wax at us, oh, yeah. where they could get points at the party. I but told you that story where I, I came to uh, an evacuation thing we were doing mm -hmm. in the suburbs. And, oh, and the cop. And I, well, not the cop. This is before the cop. Well, actually, I ran into him. So I'm late because I go to the funeral. Someone died, their wife died, she was 52 from cancer. And I get there and somebody, and I don't even know who the guy was, I was, at that point I wasn't paying a lot of attention to people, says, oh, traffic must have been bad. But you know, he was just trying to be a smart ass. So instead of me saying, yeah, I probably should have asked you if I should have skipped that 52 year old mother's funeral. But I didn't say nothing. See, that but he only took a whack at me because he felt he could because Everybody else. Right, because the white folks then gave them. I'm going to tell y'all, these whole, like these, I'm going to start doing people like they do me, but I'm not going to whisper. I'm not going to be, pss, 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 and come in your face and be like, hi. Hey, man, dude, don't call nobody asking nobody when you was on the team trying to do us in. That's yes, right. Right, like, fool, you think we don't know, I, you think we don't know who you are? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be, I'm coming to your party, too, with a big old Cheshire, Cheshire, cat grin on my face like <laughs> and, and I'm gonna just point out that for all of the people that's out here right now Todd I'd be cracking up cause what if they ever won under duress like think about the black political operatives right now and I'm not tripping on nobody but I'm talking about the black political operatives that run in and be like how crazy I am and how maze is bogus and all that stuff let me ask you a Todd have you ever seen any of these political operatives that are moving around now have you ever seen them on, on any teams that ever won anything that didn't have fifty million dollars from some millionaire somewhere else? No, no. They're, There's they're, no political. Like I think about where hired guns. Right, hired no hired cap guns. <laughs> hired cap guns because if you don't have if you ain't never shot a real gun in a real war, you got cap guns. This is all simulation for you. And just think about this simulation is essentially somebody else's livelihood. Yeah. This there and and the pride and the ego. So y'all let the white boy on the on the southwest side tell you which black people you can work with or not work with to your own detriment. Right? That's because they feel impossible. I, I think I told you when Charles Morrow was running and Charles was gonna lose. I even knew Charles was gonna lose. And I was speaking to the speaker, and he's like, Charles going to lose. They're out for him. And I was like, yeah, but I'm still going to give him $1,000 because Charles is my friend. Charles lost. That's because Charles didn't really have his own organization. But I wasn't going to let somebody else tell me that Charles Oh, no, Negroes. Oh, no, the black people be like, that was your guy? Here, I give you $1,000. You take the knife. Stick him. <laughs> Talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back.
The station, 1690 AM, WVON. The website, WVON.com. Check it out. So I'm going to give you an example. So I was watching the press conference this weekend of at the at the was it the plumbers hall where they had Tony yeah, and uh, paint, painters. Tony and For Kim, you yeah. That was so painters, yeah. Tony and it was for Tony, but Lori and Tony uh, it was for Kim, but Lo- Lori and Tony were there. Yeah. Did you look at the stage? It was Lori and Tony not talking to each other, and then six random people in between. Like, yeah. n- nobody knows. Yeah. So when you take the camera shot, the camera shot is an empty backstage. Not like everybody fired up, excited, ready to go, but it's like, and Lori and Tony mad at each other. I mean, Lori and Tony mad at each other. Instead of, there's no plethora of... Like, where's the 500 elected officials that should be behind there? Where are the people that people should care? Like, I think about, like, when I used to have to put together events for Pat Quinn, right? If Pat Quinn showed up, you were going to, even if the mayors weren't with him, the the job of the political director was to get all the people Mm -hmm. and have them there and have them all ready for the spot. Calling the mayors, working out, whatever you got to work out to get them there. But this is, we about to have 257932. We got six people on stage. <laughs> and nobody sees it. I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, self, who put this together? Right? You going to the plumbers, that mean you got, did you see the union? Did you see the painters, head of the painters? No, you saw the hall, <laughs> you saw people there, but you didn't see, you know, you don't hear the, what's that guy that's always like, yeah, you know, the guy that's loud at the rallies all the time. Yeah. Like when you pan the shot, it wasn't 50 bus loads of people loaded there and it was packed and fired up and people stomping out ready to go for early. It was kind of like, you know what? Ah, man. And it's like, I don't even know if you've never seen that. If you've never had to put it together and if nobody's ever trained you to do that, how do you do it? You, I don't even think people are looking at it that way. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even think people look at the stage and say, this is what people across the country will see. Right. The right? Point. Like, that's why when you do Iowa, Carrie and I were in the front because they was like, damn, we got the... And they're constantly looking at that because nobody really cares what's happening in the in the in the facility. All those are your supporters. What you want is the people outside looking, being like, dang, I missed out. Let me not miss out and be a part. It's so crazy. I mean yeah, it's to, yes. So you remember when uh when the mayor won and it was like uh where's Willie Wilson on the stage? You know? That was supposed to be something big. I'm, see, I'm part of something big, and the world will see it. But they were like, I don't, no, you're supposed to be over here, so we didn't go. <laughs> I just think, like, th- you know what this, can- this, this election cycle reminds me of? Right. It reminds me of the Bruce Rauner campaign cycle, right? It was the Bruce Rauner campaign cycle when the, when the Quinn camp had decided that they were going to kick me to the curb, right? They felt like they were good. They had all of these people. And, like, you know, after the first Quinn campaign, like, they all credited me for winning. But then after that, he brought his his girl in, and she hated black people, so she kind of kicked me to the curb. And they brought Will Burns in because I was, like, the the nigga. Will Burns made them feel comfortable. He said all the stuff. So they put Will Burns on top of me, and I was just like, man, I'm, you know, so I was salty. But then, like, after the election, I never went back. Like, I didn't ask for a job. I didn't do anything. I went and found my own way. And so in finding my own way, it was like I was watching people, like, people who worked for me, worked for me. Like, I remember the campaign manager was like, I can't handle this anymore. He would literally go in his office and close the door. On the last day I could show it to you, they were like, Mays, you close out the campaign because you basically ran it from here to here, right? Pat Quinn goes on all TV stations, man, if it wasn't for this dude, blah, 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 blah. 
Then they decide that I'm I'm persona not, not persona non grata, but they gonna give me the cold shoulder. And I'm watching how they're doing like white kids who I advised all the way up are like now making three hundred thousand dollars in like six months. That's persona non grata. Crazy <laughs> shit, right? Yeah. So during the next election, I just sat it out. But then as it got tighter, everybody was like, come on, man, join the team, join the team. I'm like, no, nah, y'all fucked me for four years. I'm not joining the team. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to comment on every hole that you have. Boom. And when round, and nobody believed Ronda was going to win. I called it. Actually, it was me and Pat Doherty. Like, I was like, Pat, I see a rounder win here. He was like, if this and this happens. You should call me. Hmm? You should call me. I knew he wasn't going to win. <laughs> <laughs> You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Strong. Yeah, man. That's one of those songs my wife would hate. <laughs> she would hate that? Oh, yes. Because you, you couldn't love her like that? No, because it's sappy. <laughs> so, Ty, so do you like sappy songs? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to hear that too often, you know. You, you could uh, uh, you could oversaturate this. Yeah, I quickly. feel I could see that. You got to play that like once every... Two years, yeah, something like <laughs> right. You like, oh, that used to be my jam. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, I hate when you had a jam, and they played too much, and now you hate the jam. Yes, yes, I hate. See, that. I would turn. Yeah, I, I'm like, you know, I, I would have liked this later in life. So, so I turn the station. Yeah, cause they burn some songs out. All right, y'all, talk Chicago, sixteen ninety a.m. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Todd, I've decided that there is no benefit for me being trying to be like nice, like. It's no benefit. You know, like, I always try to be like, like, I try to be cordial to people who I know screwed me over. Right? I try to be like, ha, ah, ha, ha, ha. Right? And it's like, everybody be fake phony. And I be like, I saw you in the email. Now, now let me just say this. And I got to point something out because I think there's, there's real people that stood with me during these times. Shout out to Carrie Steele. Shout out to the old man, LZ Higginbottom. Shout out to Walter Burnett. Uh even though they had to kind of do it on the low key, right? Like, everybody was like, you know. But it was people that sent the lifeline out, right? And I that made it. sure that in spite of, like, that that probably are my tried and true no matter what happens. But I, like, know all the new people. I know all the fake people. And Todd, I've just decided that going forward, it's like I'm not, like, I'm going to put you where you are. Like, if you was, if, if our relationship is transactional, let's transact. Like I'm not I'm gonna let you be where you are I'm gonna meet you where you are But I'm not Finna be doing Cause my thing is I try to be I try to Like I know people don't think this But I really try to be a not, Like accommodating Right I, I go to people's events That you know I, I be doing all type of stuff I be thinking about If I just took my hammer And started hitting people Like they, they was willing to do me Right When every time your stuff came up I just took the plunge Hey boss Hmm all right, I'm through. Hey, Todd, I got a question for you. For you. Will a socialist nominee destroy the Democratic Party? I was thinking about this. Actually, you know what made me think about this? What's in it for the black people? What's in it for the black? I know y'all be like, how did I get? But what's in it for the black people? As we've grown, we're starting to attract other people, right? Like the last meeting we had, we had a Latino showed up and I didn't know whether to kick him out the meeting <laughs> or let him stay right now the reason that I say that is because what I found myself doing was changing what I would say to not offend him mm -hmm. even though what I felt was real now like I'm saying and so one of the things that I feel like happens is when you allow people in your desire to be inclusive, you allow people into your organization. And then once they get in, 
then they start trying to change the organization. It's really how the LGBTQ community works. They go, they infiltrate an organization, they get their members in, and then over a course of time, then they start to vote on policies, they start to vote on, and then why, what you wind up looking like is you got this whole platform that you wasn't even thinking about because you ain't even care, but you got to accommodate. Mm. I'm asking this because, Todd, you know I was a hardcore Democrat, like hardcore. Young Democrats, I was at all the conventions around the world. I was super involved. And I think about how I would have responded if there was a Bernie Sanders insurgency when I was active. I would be like, why are we even listening to him? Why does he even have a place? Why is he even allowed to run as a Democrat? Now you may ask me why, but if he is identified for the last 20 years or the last 50 years in office as a socialist, why then does he come to, why doesn't he run as a socialist to become the president of the United States? Because the path is easier. But the other part is, he has now infiltrated the Democratic Party to the point where the party is now making people drop out of the race just to save themselves from what, from being cannibalized from the inside. Because the Bernie bros, they are not Democrats. No, and they will leave. As soon as he's gone. And they will leave as soon as he's gone and they will leave you like locusts. Right? They will eat up everything, eat everything up and then be like, we gone. So here's what's going to happen. Because we saw this happen last time. They ran all the way to the front. They got Bernie there. They were part of your team, part of your team, part of your team until they weren't. And then when they weren't part of your team, then they went off on something else. Right? Yes. And it left, it destroyed the chances of the Democrats winning the presidency. And they're going to do it again. Seriously. I wonder, honestly, will a socialist destroy the Democratic Party? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. Todd, and, and I think this is an or, a challenge that most organizations face. I look out into the audience of the What's In It For The Black People meetings, and there are times when you can tell people have come to try and infiltrate or to try and change the policy. Yeah, you never know when, the, well, sometimes you, you, you see somebody like, yeah, I know exactly what you're but But it's, that's yeah. not the ones you know. It's not the ones you worried about. That's right. It's right. the ones that yeah. sit there that get on. Think about this. Did you watch... Um, did you watch uh, the the uh, Who Killed Malcolm X? No, I haven't. Well, if you watch it, Malcolm X's closest bodyguard was a was a police officer. So he was in he was in his inner circle. Wait, wait, are you saying? Oh, he was a police officer and he didn't know. And and Malcolm didn't know. Yeah, I know that guy. And Malcolm's life, this guy like. Ma- so I guess my question he is... He says he had nothing to do with it, though. Right, he said he had nothing to do with it. He just watched it. You even watched the cop afterwards. They was like, why did you try and save his life? He was like, "They's like, you're supposed to let that Negro die. You one of us. Which I thought was something that we should think about. But uh, help me understand. Should the Democrats allow a socialist to lead their party's nomination? Give us a call, 312-374-374. 8130. 312-374-8130. I'm going to just tell you, Bernie Sanders will leave the, the Democratic Party in shambles. I think they would almost be better, Todd, letting Trump run, run again than win. Quite frankly, I think there's a lot of people, even like our governor, who wants Trump to win again. Because they want the... Oh, yeah, I think... A chance to run. I think it gives everybody a chance to run again. And I think that, quite frankly, what you will see is if, if Bernie Sanders is the nominee... I think that the actual party will sit down. I think the traditional party will sit down. Give us a call, 312-374-8130. Ron, you're on Top Chicago, 1690. Hey, good, 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 good morning, guys. You good know, Mays, I'm trying to listen to you all every day. Mays, that place you mentioned in Hyde Park with peanuts on the floor yesterday was... Chances are. Chances are. Everybody got it. You know, I got about 50 different call, fifty different answers. Everybody's like, chances are, chances are. I wish, yeah, I loved that place when I was a kid. That was a fun time. But real quick, Mays, and if it does destroy the Democrat Party, 
I don't see where that's any loss of black people. But guys, you know, one of the things that we do have to have a discussion when we keep hearing about this socialism, um, and I told you, uh, one of the best books you have to read is Dr. King's book, Where Do We Go From Here? Because he said neither one, socialism or capitalism, is going to necessarily work for black people or poor people. And, 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 and I'll say this, guys, before, I, because as we know, socialism means the uh, production, meaning the control of, of the production of goods and stuff in a, in a collective body, a little different than communism. But, but, but lastly, this country is not a true capitalist country. A real capitalist country is free markets. See, it's, it's not that. These, they, it's, a lot of these industries, guys, are, 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 are monopolies. See, that's not real capitalism. So we, a lot of times, and we remember in the past, all they had to do is call you a socialist or a communist, and you were pretty much blackballed. So we, 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 we can't fall for that boogeyman thing, oh, he's a socialist, so I don't like him. And then most people say that they don't even know what socialist means. They don't even know what the real meaning of capitalism. So, uh, but, but, yeah, just to answer the question, Mays, if the Democrat Party fails, it fails on its own. Look at the candidates they produce. Oh, so you know what? So I'm going to tell you what, Ryan. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to wait till 7 o'clock because i got to ask. When you said look at the candidates, I'm going to talk about that too because who are the stars of the Democratic Party, particularly in Illinois? Like, who we got? Let's talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up. Yeah, Ty, start thinking about who are the stars of the Democratic Party. I'm going to tell you what I feel like they well, did. maybe I'm a star. Woo, baby. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. When Tony Preckwinkle took over, when Tony Preckwinkle became That's into right. the party, she cut off the pipeline, in my estimation. She cut off the pipeline, I'm going to say, like, because then she brought in all of these. She felt like, so the black county board chair brings in the white Elvis impersonator, right? I wasn't black enough for... for uh enough black people and since uh, I'm John Stroger's son and I'm, I'm not Jesse Jr. Yeah, I realize that. <laughs> I, I wasn't <coughs> I wasn't deemed worthy. I'm only trying to help uh, Eighth Waters which you know you know who Eighth Waters are don't you? Every black person ever worked for the county. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so so they got what they got. So I'm going to tell you like this. I don't mind being a little bit. She killed the pipeline. So like realistically there are no like, all the people who learned how to do it were forced out, for the most part. Yeah. Like, you think about it. There was no path. There was nowhere for me now. Right? There was no way for me to work my way up. There was no way for Chris Anderson to work his way up. There was no way for Johnny, for Asia. Carrie stayed in, and she got away. But if you think about all of those young Democrats that were the hungry, that were poised to be national players, all of that shit. They killed all that and then put all of these fucking fruitcakes in. Seriously. They put in, so you put in, so she came in and put in Elvis. So you got the most powerful spot and all, everybody had to check in with these white boys. Yeah. Like, what we are check in with Scott and fucking John Keller? Like, from fucking Minnesota? Oh, yeah. And it's like, and it's like niggas sat around and let it happen. Okay. Okay. And, and and Madigan and them was cool because they was giving them whatever they wanted. Right. And then That's the black right. people couldn't get nothing because the chief of staff and the political operator was like, y'all some niggas. I freaking, man. Man. And it's like, and so now you got this wave of, so then you get these crisis opportunities, right? The crisis made the Kim thing happen. The Laquan McDonald, there was nothing that anybody political did to make Kim Fox. Nobody. Nobody. Everybody could claim it. Like, all the fucking consultants and everybody jumped on it because it was easy. It was easy pickings. Mm -hmm. And everybody walked around. It's like, when they was trying to make it seem like motherfuckers was political geniuses because they got Kim Fox elected and I ain't tripping. But I was like, that wasn't no election. That was a coronation. This is an election. So all them niggas that was running around, raving their flags, talking about how they was, and then went on to JB, 
walking around like they did some shit and they did a motherfucking thing. Yeah. Nothing. And now they standing around with their dicks in their hands. Like, what do we do? I need a hero. I'm known to that for a hero to the end of the. He's gotta be strong and he's gotta be fast and he's gotta be right for the fight. I need a hero. <laughs> The hero to the M on in line. Oh, I need a you are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host Todd Stroger. Todd, I'm asking a social media question of the day. Will a socialist nominee destroy the Democratic Party uh, nationally? I, Todd, I'm gonna tell you. I think that the Democratic Party is doing their own best job to destroy themselves. You know what? They don't... Everybody now has recognized that they need black people in the political party, right, in, in, in the I Democratic know, Party. They needed black people. Yeah, but, but they didn't... They, they just didn't want to give them that. And now they know they need us, and so let me tell you how they I see it. Still don't want to give us that. Exactly. Exactly. And it's on both sides. See, the Democrats have gotten themselves in a situation because they have... They sold us the uh, first black president, being Clinton, right? Then they sold us the second black president, being the first black president, who did absolutely nothing for black people. Y'all can talk that smack, but every time, not, I'm talking about specifically for black people. That didn't happen. Yeah, but what you would want, and black in my opinion, is to, to have built something that black people could uh, use as a foundation to keep moving up the ladder, but I don't see anything. And, and essentially what the Democrats did was rely on Obama, and they're still relying on Obama to be the reason that black people vote for them. But I think that quietly, right, like, yeah, country, down in the country of South Carolina, that's one thing. Yeah. But I think in Chicago, black folks are like, what? So the, the challenge now, Todd, is, the challenge now, Todd, is, what is what has the Democratic Party done to hold on to black people? I'm saying, like, if you lived in Illinois right now, and you are a Democrat, why are you voting Democrats? Because it ain't no Republicans. That's why. But right. like, right. Wh oh, yeah. what has the Democratic Party done for black people? City, county, state, national. Give it to me. Give it to me. Get in in the last twelve years. Tell me what the Significant achievement, not an elected position. Right. The uh, what has been from the Democratic Party over the last twelve years? Give me a win, something that they have delivered to Black people, city, county, or state. Let's see. Let's see. What has been created uh, that Black people run or something that they hire Black people? Uh, come on, puppies are those. Um, and so on that note, <laughs> the Democrats have a black problem. Yeah, but they'll tell you that they don't. Oh no, they'll tell you. No, what they'll do is they'll tell you we know how important the black people are. That's why we're going to hire Latinos. No, no. What they'll tell you is there's the black county board president. There's the black mayor. She don't like black people. You guys Neither one of them like black. People. They don't like black people. Well, you can see it by the way that they. That you you could tell. They, you could tell. Like, not, I mean, when you saw black organizations for sure. You, you saw Tony Preckwinkle when she listed her four four priorities. Like when Greg Hines snaps and says something about her, she responds. If Cranes, if the Sun Times, if the Tribune says something about how they're unpleased with Tony Preckwinkle, she feels the need to respond to them. For us, she'll tell us, well, Y'all don't see what I did for you? And I'm still being trying to figure out what's going on. So tell me, what have we gotten from the Democratic Party in the last four years? And then when they have a socialist, I mean, I feel like Bernie becomes the head of the party, and he say, we having us a Democrat exit. Y'all are now officially all Democratic socialists. And all the white folks that left, you know, like the ones 
you know the ones like the Mike Carbonargies of the world mm-hmm. who was like, I can't be up under you Negroes. They gonna find they gonna the Reagan Democrat. They gonna be Democrat. They gonna be Republicans. Watch. Right. All right, let me go to the phone lines. Let's go to Brian. Brian, you're on Talk Chicago, sixteen ninety. Yeah, uh, good morning, guys. Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of laughing because chickens coming home to roost. <laughs> it's a Bernie Sanders thing. If you look back four years ago, the Republican Party had the same problem by a guy named Donald Trump, who was a billionaire, who could self fund his campaign and say what he wants to. So he ended up going through the establishment of the Republican Party because I don't see him as really a Republican. He's a now to bring the Bernie Sanders on. See. When you create a system where everything is free, 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 that sounds good to a lot of young people. And you think Bernie Sanders, well, wait four years when guys like Yang Yam have more experience and they start offering you $3,000 check. You know how good that sounds to a 24-year-old? Yeah, you're right. You're right. It sounds good. You're right. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. You ask what the Democratic Party has given black people in the 12 years, I tell you. Okay. The right to smoke marijuana. Thanks for hearing me. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Stop Chicago. I'm going to go one more. Let's see. Karen. Karen, you're on Top Chicago. Hello. Hello, Karen. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, we're through with Bernie Sanders if he is the head of the ticket. Anytime, now I'm a registered work nurse. I work in one of the major hospitals in uh, Illinois. I've had from time to time people tell me that uh, affordable care has really helped them. My parents own a little strip mall here on Stony Island, and the lady that's in there, she had stage 3 can- uh, ovarian cancer. This about four or five years ago. And my mother asked her, she said, well, my God, why, why would you let this stuff go that long without, you know, check up on yourself that you let it get to stage three? She said she had no insurance until Obama has come, you know, uh, Affordable Care Act. My thing is, why can't we strengthen the Affordable Care Act? Because as far as Bernie is, said is concerned, he is on TV saying that he, uh, that illegal immigrants can have Medicare for all. Now he's saying this. Uh, man, they all said this though. No, but the point is, can you see, can you see right here in the summertime, he's going to let those caravans in. And he's going to show, can you see the visual? I all see All these it. people coming yeah. in, wait a minute, all these people coming in, and then Bernie Sanders saying, yes, illegal immigrants can have uh, uh, affordable uh, Medicare for all. That you Jesus think he's, I'm Jesus not going to vote for him. Jesus and as far as Trump, let me just say this. As far as Lord. Trump is concerned, I don't know, it's not that we don't like he. What is he doing for us? Everybody in his cabinet is white males. He don't even, this man wrote a book about him that knew him for years. So he doesn't look at minorities, especially blacks, as any, it's equal. Anytime you can have Carson, uh public uh, housing, he says, that man is a neural surgeon. I can't even, well, I have a, a bachelor of science. I can't even work in that department as a nurse. That's how bad that man is. So, I'm going to tell you. Let me tell y'all. Y'all not going to have me arguing over which white folks is racist. Mm-hmm. Do put, y- y'all, y'all trying to argue with me about people who have actual records of locking people up and putting them in jail. Let me tell you what, though. When you was talking about those illegal immigrants and undocumented, you don't don't talk about them because Mayor Lightfoot might get mad and she'll tell you. Choose your words carefully. <laughs> you gotta give health uh, health care to everybody. That, that's what's that's how we're gonna get coronavirus. Leave it, leave them at the board. It's Tough Chicago 690. We'll be back. <laughs> the talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is 1690 WBOS. Take it She was like, caravans, them care. She ain't forgot about them caravans. That just tell you how effective Donald Trump's messaging was. It was, that's true. I'm going to tell you, if Trump was smart, he'd be like, I'm closing the borders because of coronavirus. Ain't no, we're not allowing any more people from Saudi Arabia. Man, I'd be going crazy. I would use this crisis to my most. Every time they reported a, a virus in a different country, I'd be like, "They're on the list. They're on the list. They're on the list." Now, see, if you do that, uh, the, the, you go start hitting all the, uh, the Europeans too. Or, <laughs> they're like, wait a minute. Hey, you'd be like, "Wait a minute. Get them all." Mm-hmm. <laughs> You stupid, Fred. 
<laughs> Fred, you're stupid. Shout out to the Bolingbrook girls basketball team. <laughs> Shout out to the Bolingbrook girls basketball team that is going down state as we always do. Hey, you see where uh, Northwestern's girls uh, so? won the, no. <laughs> the Big Ten Jets. So? Well, the, whose the, girls? The Northwestern. Who? Lamphere, Springfield, Lamphere. That's a school? You're, you're joking, right? They got a school in Springfield. They got a high school in Springfield. <laughs> girls, they got girls basketball team. Now, I know my man, Blake Turner. Now, I know my man, my frat brother, Blake Turner. He got them Springfield, Lamphere basketball boys breaking, breaking backs. Yeah, they got but I didn't know they had a girls basketball team. Lucky for y'all, y'all ain't got to play the Raiders. <laughs> Woo! Fred Harris trying to start some mess, y'all. He want to know: Do people care as much about girls basketball as boys basketball? No. It's that simple. So what y'all want me to make the, the list in black and white? I felt like all the names are in white. Red, black, and green. You get it? But I could make y'all a black and white one. You know, the older we get, the simpler things need to be for us to see. Tucson, who is Sandy Darity and for whose campaign? I mean, just think about this. Right now, there's no presidential operations. There's like, who are the people that we're going to be excited for? Is anybody going to come to Springfield tomorrow? I need money for a bus. What kind of bus? A big bus. A big old bus to bring people to Springfield. What's up? This is uh, Women in Beauty for 728 this morning. Yo, who is it? <laughs> I want to be able to, to, to talk uh, about it. I may have to look it up. Uh, uh. Naya Franklin. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> I'm not sure who that is. She's young. No wonder I don't know. Uh, I spell Naya. N A Y? N I A. That's Nia. 
Ms. Mia. She's a pageant queen. 4865 has a test has a hearing tomorrow. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my clothes. to oh, I told you, but you know how we do at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WBON Morning Show team. What's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as my musical conductor, the soul playing Miss Sonia Escobar. Gotta say what's up to my co-host, Ty Stroger. Man, Ty, you holding that phone close? Yeah, you tell me you put the glasses. You man. I be feeling crazy when I be looking at my phone. I be having it close to my eye. I be like, I be like, I don't want to be like one of them old people. Yeah. I feel like I'm officially right. I am officially an old people. Mm-hmm. I'm officially welcome. Old, uh, welcome. They ain't sent me my um, card though. How old are you? Uh, Forty nine. No, you gotta get it totally fifty. Oh, okay. My boy Jay Ivy is the spokesperson for AARP, and he younger than me. They must have given them a uh, uh, honorary membership. Yeah, honorary membership. I mean, I want my free movie tickets. Y'all can stop that. <laughs> like, so I can't wait. I'm going to be using my AARP card. Like, do I get this kind of ice cream? Excuse me, uh, my hotel. I'm going to be like, they're going to be like, sir. I'm going to be like, excuse me. They're going to be like, that is. Wait, wait, wait. They ain't got you. It's not a lot of free stuff, but there are a lot of discounts. I'm getting it all. I'm using it all. I'm going to tell you. That's why I, I still be thinking about That's why Rob Goyevich did them free senior rides, man. People still talk about them. They still do. They do. And it's like, I, I keep telling you, I'm going to leave Rob alone because Rob going to sneak back. Speaking of that, we need to get Mark Vargas on the show uh, this week. So we need to get Mark Vargas, the guy, because I want to talk about the story of him freeing, getting Rob Goyevich out. We need to talk about that. Now, we had the first shot at him, and he done did everybody else. And it's like we let's let's get him in here. It's Tom Chicago 1690. We are now moving on time. Yep. To the uh Democratic primary. So it's early voting. Yesterday was the first day of early voting. Did you all get your What's Center for the Black People uh palm card? It is available digitally. You can go to the Maze Jackson page, you can go to the What's Center for the Black People page. Um we have made uh recommendations. It is not a Bible but more so a guide to help you in the cases that you don't, in case you don't know. Todd, but I was thinking about the what's in it for the black people voters got, and I was thinking about, I was looking at all the mail that is inundated my phone, my mailbox, mm-hmm. and one of the things that I saw in the mailbox was the Democratic Party um, sample ballot slash palm card, et cetera. And I talked about this a little bit yesterday. But I thought it was odd, Todd, that in the largest black county in the country, right? We're the largest black county in the country. And if we ain't the first, we're the second, but we're the first. It is amazing to me that with the base of the Democratic Party being black people, with 
the biggest race that we got being Kim Fox, actually Kim Fox, Scott Neville, and I can understand why they didn't do uh, Richard Boykin because he they didn't support him. Right. But Todd, I don't know what they're thinking to send into black households um, a palm, a sample ballot that is supposed to encourage people to come out and vote and put Dick Durbin on. Now, Dick Durbin doesn't even live in Cook County. No, nah, he lives in Springfield. He lives in Springfield. And then, let me tell you what I saw Dick Durbin did yesterday on the Slick Boy move. Hmm. Sent out an email, because, you know, we all, first of all, all these white politicians, like, they should be shamed. They, they're all shamed. They just can't say it. So they playing it off. They do, you know how, like, you be like, the real issue is right here, but we don't talk about everything else but the real issue. So yesterday I was, you know, we gave them the business about the fact that none of the Democratic parties, none of the Democratic Party uh, white people or elected officials were checking the chairman of the party or saying anything about the chairman of the party not supporting Kim Fox. And they still have it. It's still crickets. Can you find my crickets? I need crickets. Um, It's still crickets. But then what I saw was, you know, they did the slick white boy move. Right, like remember when we called out Jan Schakowsky, then the next week all the white guys had a little yeah. huddle and they did like a little Facebook live for ten people so they could be like, Look, we, we we, look at us, we're supporting Kim Fox. Right. With our twenty people. Fake that's that fake love. Mm-hmm. Fake friends, what that they call it, right? Then that was their fake move. Then Dick Durbin after hearing and seeing all that, he does the fake move. You know what he does? He sends out an email. And he sends out an email saying, we're supporting Kim Fox. Uh, we are going to it's criminal justice reform, blah, blah, blah. But by the way, could you support my guy, Mike Carbonardi? And here's his link to it. Now, let me just be clear. That when you send those two together, they have the exact same effect on both sides of town. Mm-hmm. To the black people, black people are like, don't nobody care about this white boy. And on the black side, on the white side of town, they be like, this negress. <laughs> Right? Yeah. I remember hearing stories of the white legislators saying that they couldn't get people to sign uh, petitions because it said Kim Fox. That's right. That's what the white people were saying. And I was just thinking to myself, but y'all got Negroes down here trying to sell. No, there would be. How many signatures do you think Mike Carbonardi would have got from the black community if Kim Fox's name wasn't on that petition? Oh, I don't think he'd have done very well. Exactly. And so they're doing the same thing. So they, they do the fake love to us. Right? Hey, support Kim Fox, but by the way, I'm going to slide this Mike Carbonardi. Mm-hmm. Todd, got to ask a question. Who are the stars of the Democratic Party? In Illinois. Right now, I would say the stars are the governor. Uh, black Prince. stars. Oh, black? Uh, the, the mayor. The mayor. The black, f- black stars for black people. <laughs> okay, I gotta keep Man, you keep on the wheel of this thing down. It's a little difficult. Okay, who are the black stars? Uh, the mayor, Is Tony Preckwinkle, a black political star. Yeah, you think is she really a star? She only won twenty four percent. Well, you know, she she still got like. Two is she a star or is she declaring herself a star? Well, like she still, she still has two and a half years, so that that kind of. Okay, but I'm saying like st- when I say star, like somebody people get excited. Like black people are like, man, oh. if I see this person, I gotta get on. I gotta get on board. We gotta fire. Who are the black stars of the Democratic Party? Of Illinois? I don't think we have one. Huh? I don't we got the most black elected officials in the whole entire country. And you telling me we don't have a star? I think we have a star. I think the oh, star maybe your wife. I think my I think the okay, so I'm I'm biased. I think Carrie is a star, but I think they have worked hard to snuff her, yeah. right? They're yeah. like, we cannot allow her, right? Because I think, I think she has crossover ability. She, she's a she's a chemist. She could be like uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> yes. Uh, however, there has been a concerted effort by the party to snuff her, right? Remember, there were people who were considering her to run for lieutenant governor, and then they were like, but Mays Ooh. would. Mays that's, that's awful. That's like running for treasurer. <laughs> well, you know, you know, city treasurer. Right. Right. No, yeah, city that's treasurer. Yeah, right. city treasurer. Everybody thinks yeah, that they're there. You're like, hey, wait a minute. There's nowhere to go. Exactly, and you get a small office. So yeah. she wasn't do that. But I am. What I'm suggesting is, Todd. Like, who are the political stars? 
I, 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 like if you were to look at Facebook, you would think that it was all good black politically, right? You would be like, man, look at all the black people at the galas and the parties. I'm going to tell you, Negroes going to have rallies and all type of stuff in the next couple of weeks. And everybody going to be running around patting themselves on the back with no votes in the back. Right. Who are the political stars in, black political stars in Illinois? Like, black political stars that if they get up, that they can move people, they can rouse you, they can get you excited, that you that people will move for. Because here's what I'm suggesting. Right now, Tony Preckwinkle mailing out videos of her saying, Hi, I'm Tony Preckwinkle, and I need for you, black people, to come out and support the judges because, like, everybody's on like, yeah, we gotta go! It's funny to me, Ty, because the people who have the most stick with black people or have a good reputation with black people the party avoids you know why the party avoids them because right. they don't hold them accountable like it's a reason that they don't I'm going to just be honest with you it's a reason that they don't ask the WVON morning show to come somewhere right I would think that you Todd you would think that it would be a string of candidates sitting right here in the WVON morning show begging to get on the show so that they could get their word out to the most informed black audience in the world. You know what they want to do? Right. They want to go wear softballs. Let me tell you, I, I would love the opportunity as a black elected official to come and answer what's in it for the black people for black people. Now, all these white folks done made y'all stars, but y'all can't come to the crib. Think about that. Think about how many white people celebrate you and then you come to the crib and they be like, uh, don't nobody know you around these parts? Well, you know, we, we talk about uh, not being powerful. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. Talk about it when we come back. It's Top Chicago 1690. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up. So I was thinking, right, Ty? On The Talk of Chicago. Who? So I'll be thinking about Carrie, right? Like, Carrie has a, and y'all know I'm biased, but every time people see Carrie, everywhere she goes, black people, white people, they be like, oh my God, you're a chemist, you're such a, you know, and let me tell you what, the party is so hell-bent on not allowing her a platform mm -hmm. that they would be willing to let their candidates stand up there with whack-ass people who can't bring them nobody. Think about this. If you get Carrie, right? Who am I going to be at? I'm going to be trying to see y'all be successful. Right. Right? But what what white folks have done, as always, is convince black folks to run, put your weapons down. You put, Don't use your best tools in the toolbox because you might offend us. So your ass will be unelected. And it's funny because, like, if I, man, if she don't get an invite, she don't be breaking her neck to go nowhere. <laughs> right? You don't call, like, so wait a minute. Your dumb ass is two blocks from our house. And you don't call the most popular. I mean, think about the the media that she's in the black space that she's had. Think about every day. Think about all the white folks be like, oh my God, you're the and it's the black folks that be the ones. Like, it's white folks be calling like, man, you, 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 you what do you want to run for? You know you can take anything you want. I mean, look at you. Black people don't see the value. value. <clears throat> they never see the value. I shouldn't say never, but it's rare that they see the value in, in black elected officials. There's always some people who can't stand you for something. So uh, when you asked your question, I jokingly, you know, threw out a name in the other room and just kind of like being a smart ass joking comment. The more I'm thinking about it, it's probably the perfect answer. Chance to ramp her. No, he's not a black star. What's that? He's, he's not, not a black star. And he, he can be political. He's not a black star, though. I mean, I think. Is I, that what's, what, I don't think he's star. not a political. And he's not, not political. Not, not the political. He's not. He, not right now. And I. He, chance to rap right making. People. Who? Kids. Okay. I hear you. That's a damn shame that that's all y'all come up with. <laughs> Personality. Hey, take it all out. 
Look what it's all about. Before the night is through, you will see my point of view. Even if I have to scream and shout, oh baby, I'm a star. Whoa, you might not know it now, baby, but try on it, I'm a star. Whoa, I don't want to stop till I reach the top. Sing it. Hey, look me to this sun. Tell me, do you like what you hear? If this don't turn you on, just say it, honey, I'm gone, buddy. I know ain't nothing wrong with your ears. Hey, take it all out. But now it just might be too late. I'm not going to change your mind. You got me paralyzed. Take a picture, sweetie. I ain't got time to wait. Oh, baby, I'm a star. Whoa. Why not know it now? Baby, if I try y'all, then I'm a star. I don't want to stop till I reach the top singing. Stop. If I say nothing comes too easy. Cause when you got it, baby, nothing comes too hard. You see what I'm all about. Now I gotta scream and shout. Baby, 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 baby. It's the WVON Morning Show. <laughs> I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stranger. Ty, I, one day I'm going to be a star. That's my start, my thing. But Ty, I got to ask a question. Who are the black political stars of the Democratic Party? I'm going to tell you, man. I feel like they elect these people and then put them in a hole. Like, don't let you get too much. Yeah. And don't you get too black. Because the second you get too black... You know, we won't stick with you. And you know you need us first. Even though the biggest part of the party is black people. Well, yeah. you, you need a certain amount of something other than you. But, like I said before, if you don't realize your worth, then you got what we got right now. People what do we have right now, Tom? Fight. People fighting each other. People, just, just like you pointed out. People afraid to do anything together. If somebody says something, hey, don't work for Mays. He, he, no, he trouble for us. Then he trouble for the white people. What do you say? Us, and then, us, right, us boss. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, like, look, Mays is trouble for us. And it'd be like the white people that's rich and the black people that's poor. Right. And it's like we got a problem with you know what? Us Ty. isn't equal. Yes. Yeah. But we're not equal. And it's like, all I be, Todd, I be asking for people to get more. So I'm saying, like, Todd, who delivers for black people? I don't know. Because like you say, look, my face, you got people fighting over every little thing. It's hard to deliver when you are this splintered. So, like, just like you pointed out yesterday. So there's you and I talking our stuff. Then you got people on internet radio talking stuff. But then they, they got kind of talk stuff about us. Right. So that's because they don't have a marketing plan. So let me just be clear. To the goofballs who don't understand marketing and advertising, who think that just talking loud and not investing in yourself, like don't be mad because we invest in our brand, right? Like you could do all the same stuff. Take the time, build your own audience. Let me help you out, right? It's like I feel like that's, that's another part of our problem. We look at somebody over there and be like, ooh, how could I take what he got instead of building me something? Exactly. So... I think that goofballs that, that falls into politics. It it, it, it runs that same way. Uh, people are maybe in the reverse. They're afraid that somebody's going to take what they got. So what do they have, though, Todd? Like honestly, when you think about it, what do what they, they have? have? I got me. I got me. I get I to go to dinner. My mom got a job. Okay. And my nephew got a job. All right. But we could have everybody could have a job if y'all were roll. Yeah. Well. If we could roll together, everybody would have a job. That I, I, I just think like, like just think about this right now. The party is going to tell you to elect Mike Carbonargi so that Madigan can get all the jobs. Whereas if we were smart, we would all go to, black committeemen would be smart. They would say, we're going to get absolutely nothing out of Mike Carbonargi. You're going to pick two Negroes. Right. The rest of y'all ain't gonna get nothing. No. And y'all say, hey Boykin, 
Come on over here. Sit down right here. You got 300 jobs. We need 150 of them. And we'll support you. You still got 150 to do your thing. But now we got three jobs per ward to spread out. Yeah. At a minimum. But we don't think of it that way. Like what we think of is we're going to offend Madigan or we're going to offend some white guy and then they are going to take our two jobs when we can have 300. Right, right. Like, so we elect Mike Carbonargi and six of y'all do well. Six of y'all get one job apiece because they told y'all the last time that uh, they allowed you all to program into our minds that Boykin was a Republican. So y'all like, woo, woo, woo. So the only person that stood up for y'all on the pop tax and paid a price for it, y'all let the white folks then, then after he did what you need, what people really wanted, y'all let people come take him. And black folks participated. Mm -hmm. Black folks. Black folks participated. Why do we, like, again, I'm going to tell you, what happens in, on election day after all these black folks get elected is they figure out how do they please or satisfy the white folks. Instead of saying, I'm about, like Dorothy Brown, she did a little different. Now, she still gave Madigan her piece. Don't get it twisted. Because yeah. Madigan had the chief of staff, so they made sure. But Dorothy Brown said, you know what? You know how she always had the preachers? Because when she had her, she chopped it up amongst the black people. So the black people came back to her. See how that worked out? Right. Black people don't get that though. They be like, ooh, my like y'all get us. My only problem with what Dorothy uh, uh, did was that when her political person left, she did what everyone does. Went to Madigan. She went to the speaker and said, saying, there's uh, black political power people who have people who've done this. Let me find one. You know, but that, they, see, but I'm going to tell you, black I'm going to almost tell you that I don't know if you can, unless we groom somebody, like unless there's a chain of command, you can't, it's hard to put a black person in as your chief of staff if you're running a multi-billion dollar agency when everybody else has snuffed their opportunity to grow and develop. So then you put the guy in the spot as the chief of staff, case in point, and they're not ready because they haven't had to manage as big a stuff and no, we don't no, have a pipeline. You're right about that, but... Uh, and then you get your head whacked because they trying to learn on the job, and I blame me for that. Okay, but <laughs> I uh, yeah, but yeah, actually, that's that, that's an aside. You know what I was thinking about though? What were you thinking about? Nia Franklin. Oh, uh, you were thinking about Nia Franklin. Me too, because Nia Franklin. This it is time for the Black Women in Beauty. And Nia Franklin was born in Winston Salem, North Carolina, in 1993. She's currently only 26 years old, Todd. Man, now she know. attended East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, and graduated the degree in music composition. She also attended the University of North Carolina School of Arts and earned her Master of Music in 2017. Ooh. Now, her breakout moment was when she became Miss America 2019 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, she was also crowned Miss New York, in Buffalo, New York, and even crowned Miss... Five boroughs? Miss Black and Gold. Hey! Sponsored by the East doing. Carolina Universities. <laughs> Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. What a uh, when you talk about overcoming obstacles, she says she's overcome obstacles and hardships to move many times in New York and dealing with high rent costs while trying to consistently prepare for her pageant. Think about that. Miss America hey, you know can't saying? afford to say the rent is too damn high. <laughs> you know, her father had a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and she gave him her stem cells. And she gave him her stem and it worked. Yes. Now, if parents were famous, we'd have some, if her parents were really famous, we'd have more information. Right. But seeing as we don't, we're going to make that our amazing, black, beautiful woman of the, of the day. Hey, y'all, it's tough. Wait, wait, you forgot to say, she's part of the the quadrant, the four black people who hold the crowns. Oh, that's right. And you know what? Her, Vanessa Williams, she got her taken back. Uh, Erica Harrell, and I don't know who the other one is. So we'll have, since you wanted to bring it up, who's the fourth one? 
Oh man, I said I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just was talking. I didn't say I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> hey, y'all, this is Talking Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Mm. Don't, I throw the softball. You hit it. Baby, I'm a. Dennis, that is a tremendous point. It is a tremendous point. We're taking a break. What's up, y'all? Take a moment, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, and share the broadcast.
I'm Rod Blagojevich. When I need my political fix, I listen to the WVON Morning Show with Mays Jackson and Todd Stroger. It's effing golden. He's got a sense of <laughs> You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co host, to Rod Stroger. Todd, I'm going to go to the phone lines because somebody wants to talk to you. Hey, on the live lines, and then we're going to go. Wait, act, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. I can't go to that. Uh, we have WBON family. We have on our live line uh, one of our top black allies in Springfield. One of the, young, you know, Todd, there was a time in Springfield when people recruited the least educated black people that they could find and get them to be all in on the social service program and really not necessarily look at the bigger picture. Todd, in the last, since I left Springfield, though, times have changed quite a bit. We've got a bunch of young black professionals, attorneys, uh, professional services, all that good stuff. And they got kind of a whole new look or way that they're operating. It's pretty funny because even during the, during the cannabis debate, the young brothers who there's a young group of, of black elected officials who haven't been co-opted, aren't part of the Springfield swamp that was like, we ain't necessarily going for this cannabis deal because we don't see nobody black in. Mm -hmm. Now they were convinced, again with the help of Kim Fox, to be on the board. But Todd, I'm going to tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited about what the potential future for Springfield is. I don't think that the speaker lasts forever. I don't. No, not the last. And, and, and even if they don't take him on directly, I think that they have begun the fight. And here to talk to us about the first, the opening salvo in the fight. This fight ain't about against nobody. This is a fight for us as black people. Uh -huh. See, we ain't fighting against nobody. I'm not asking these guys. See, I need these I reps. Think that's what people don't understand. I mean, I'm talking about black people and electives. They don't understand that, no, this doesn't mean you are trying to destroy that guy. This means you're trying to become more powerful. And you're trying to help your people. And, and I, so I thought that it was... That's a, part of being powerful. Yes. Because... what I learned, the first thing I learned is those people were calling me after for things. Uh -huh. I can't help you. <laughs> I'm trying to help me. <laughs> if I can't help me, then I can't help you. Well, let me tell y'all what. You know, he is running for election. And I did not put him on the West End for the Black People uh, palm card because he don't need it. He don't have no competition. And I'm just telling you, if anybody was running against him, uh, we would have to be all in against him. Because th when I was looking for a state legislator to help black people get out of the minority bucket, there were a lot of people that ran from me. I'm telling you, Todd. It's a lot of people that have, like, man, we can't talk to Mays. We got to stay away from him. This brother didn't. He, he picked up my call in the second ring. I asked for a meeting, and within two days, he had a meeting. When I told him what I was trying to do, and I wasn't necessarily how to do it, he said, brother, just work with me, and we'll help you get this done. No sooner did I talk to him and get this going, he got the bill drafted, filed. Then they sent it to Rules Committee. You know, when things go to Rules Committee, that's usually where it goes to die. <laughs> this brother was so cold. That he called up some of his colleagues, got them to get the bill out of rules committee and into the state government committee. Here to talk to us about it all, where there is a scheduled committee hearing this week. Here to talk to us all about it right now is my guy. And you know you're not my state rep, but I feel like you are my state rep. It is Cam Buckner, who is also a member of... The fighting Illini. He was one of our fighting Illini who went to the last bowl game before the last bowl game. Y'all welcome him Hi. here to the morning show. Uh, welcome. I want to say back. Uh, Cam Buckner. Cam, welcome back, my brother. Good, good morning, Mays. President Stroger, how y'all doing? Good, good. good. See, how you, see that? And see how he gave you your respect? That was nice. See how he gave you your respect? See, that's so what I'm talking about. We don't respect us, nobody else will. That's, that's right. See? See? So, Representative Buckner, um, first of all, tell us about House Bill 4865. Give us some background and then tell us what's going on because we need to tell our people what we need to do. Yeah, so, so House Bill uh, 4865 
Uh, it, basically, what it does is it amends the Business Enterprise for Minority Women and uh, Persons with Disability Act, right? So we call that BEP. Uh, and what it does, very simply, is it makes sure that uh, state contracts are awarded to businesses uh, owned by descendants of African slavery uh, based on the total uh, the total do- dollar amount has to coincide with the percentage or the proportion of uh, descendants of American slavery that exist in the state of Illinois. Wait, 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 wait. You said descendants of American. Wait, you're not talking about African Americans. You're not talking about people of color. You, it says descendants of American slavery in the bill? It does. And, and, and the reason that's important, Maze, is because there have been a number of uh, noble and well meaning and well intended uh, bills and, and, and things that are actually law right now that have tried to get at what this issue is, and, and we use words like minority, and we use words like disadvantage. But what, what happens is it starts to crowd us out, and it doesn't do what it's intended to do. So, look, my, my granddad was a, was a Baptist preacher, man, and when when he uh, would get a little bit too convoluted, he would bring it back, and he would say, let's just make it plain, right? And so this bill is about making it plain, man, making it plain uh, that we should be awarded contracts uh, in the state, uh, from the state, based on our portion of population in the state. Okay, so now let me ask a, a question, Representative Buckner. So how, how did that, how was that, how well was that received in Springfield? i tell you what, I mean, there, there I have not gotten uh, a whole bunch of, of blowback, blowback yet. There's been a lot of questions. People have been, uh, my phone's been blowing up all week uh, about it. Um, and, you know, we pushed it to get it out of rules. Um, as you say, rules uh, is often the graveyard for good legislation. Uh, but there, there are some concerns. Obviously, I'm sure when I get over to the Capitol in a, in a few minutes here, there'll be there'll be people hounding me. I might need security, um, but I'm good with that, right? Uh, there, <laughs> now, there. who? Now, wait, back up, back up, back up. Because, Representative, I got a question: Who would be hounding you, and why would anybody have a problem with black folks getting only what's proportionate to us in the state? No, honestly, the the, the folks who I, I thought may have issues, some of the, the outside groups who have pushed against. Uh, this for a very long time, they have not reached out to me. Um, the, the questions that I've gotten so far have been about the operational efficiencies um, from state agencies, like how can we actually pull this off? Uh, you know, the same questions that, that have been asked for, for, for years by them. Um, and these are the same type of questions that have created things like the waiver uh, program, which we obviously know puts our people in a, in a very bad spot. Uh, so, you know, I expect that I'll hear more, um, both opposition and, and also support uh, this week leading up to, to this hearing on Wednesday. Now, Representative, there's a hearing on Wednesday. That when you know when you hear when black people hear hearing, they get a little nervous. Uh, help me understand what is this hearing? What will happen at the hearing? So the the, the hearing is scheduled for Wednesday at two o'clock uh, here in Springfield, and um, the bill will be introduced. It will, it will have its first first reading, right? So uh, uh, for for the listeners. A, a bill has to be read in committee first and then passed out of committee or, or killed in committee um, before it could make it to the floor for a, a full House vote. Um, so what I fully expect uh, is a, a robust debate in the state government administration uh, committee on, on Wednesday. And I just want to uh, let, let you guys know and the listeners know uh, that is one of the actually least diverse committees uh, in Springfield. I was looking at that committee. I was like, how they put this in the all-white people committee? It was only one black person on the committee. Who was the black person on that committee? Justin Slaughter. Justin, Justin Slaughter uh, is the vice chair of that committee, and he is the only black person on the committee. Even more, there's, only, there's even only one Latino as well. Uh, so it is a, it is a um, very uh, majority-centered uh, committee. Uh, so, Representative Buckner, I got to go to break, but when we come back, I want you to tell us what can we do to help get this bill out of committee, help motivate people. I did see that Justin Slaughter joined on as a co-sponsor, which it seems like that would be good to have the vice chairman of the committee being a co-chair of this. But when we come back, Representative Buckner, I want you to tell people what we can do, whether we can come down to Springfield to check it out, whether it is we fill out witness slips, do we need to call people, but we want this to keep moving. So when you come back, I want you to tell us what actions we need to take. And then I want you to tell me who do we need to get, who else do we need to call on the black side to tell them that they need to be putting their weight behind it. And then again, you know, here's an opportunity for the speaker to prove that he don't dislike black people. Hey, we talk about it all when we come back. It's State Representative Cam Buckner. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jack.
Man, that could be good, y'all. That's actually, I mean, like. What committee is that? State government. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing. Because then what, but if it's in state government, then they could probably make it be coordinated amongst all the government agencies to do it. But my thing is, guys, is that we finally got somebody who was willing to take that bill and go. Now, what we have the opportunity, if the bill doesn't pass, what we want, what we want is a bill. We want that bill to get out of, we want it to pass. But at the worst case, we want it to get to the floor to get a vote so we can see who's with us and who's against us. Right? right. Now, let me tell you. And I would be okay, and I know y'all be crazy, but I would be okay if the Latinos said they wanted to be broken out of it too to get them on board. And if the LGBTQ caucus said that they want to be broken out, I, I'm not advocating for it, but if they wanted to do it, I wouldn't fight it because it wouldn't affect our peace at that point. See, the problem is when everybody's in the same bucket, then they can take some or all of it and say, hey, I was just doing what was available. Black people need to get certified if they got some shit to certify. The witness list is available online. Yeah, Janessa, he needs black people. He needs black. He needs us to stop tuning up these legislators to feel like they got to be scared of us than them. So we got to turn it up. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Trojan, on the live line tab. We got, you know what, man? I, you know what? I got two state representatives. I got yeah. two. I got my man, Jahario Omar Williams, in the tent, right? That's, that's, my, that's my state rep for where I live. I'm going to call Cam Buckner. I, I know I know he ain't really, but he going to be the state rep I call for my business. Let me tell you, I just want to point something out too. Um, Representative Buckner, even as a new uh, as a new state representative, was not scared to get in the game and mix it up. You know, they was having some challenges over at, at our very own Harold Washington uh, Cultural Center. And you know, it's very easy for benign neglect to occur. Mm -hmm. uh, for people to just sit back and kind of be like, oh, I didn't know it was happening. Uh, Cam jumped in and saved. I, I don't know if the proper word is saved, but did a tremendous amount of work to assist the Harold Washington Cultural Center. I don't think he was, I think, I don't think he was running. He didn't run from the challenge. He ran to it. And figured it out, Representative Buckner. Tell the people where you from, though, man. Tell, tell them, you know, tell them a little bit about you, man. Cause you, you know, sometimes I think when I first saw your story, I was like, I was surprised to know your roots, man. 
Uh, I'm from Rosen. I'm from the Hunts. Uh, did you say the Hunts? That's what you know. I'm from the Hunts. <laughs> <laughs> from the Hunts, sir. Absolutely. Um, born and raised on the far south side, man. Um, a proud, proud graduate of Morgan Park High School, mighty, mighty Mustangs. Um, went on to uh, play football at the University of Illinois. Then did some work with the law school, did some work on Capitol Hill. Um, moved to the city of New Orleans for a little while, did some work for the mayor down there. And, hey! Uh, found my way back home. That's right. Yeah, Nola. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let me tell you what. And then he came back, y'all. Um, and Cam was pretty modest about his resume. I was like, you know, y'all know when I first meet, you know, I was looking like, man, who you, don't buy Nobody care where you at. You probably with these been hanging out with these old, you know, North Side. You know. Then he hit me with the he was a member of uh, the Fighting Illini football team that took us to the Sugar Bowl. So and, I, you, and you just melted. I, 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 I didn't <laughs> melt, but I did have to. Then he threw me off a little bit because he said, Todd, he was a member of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity. Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity. I, I, <laughs> and, and, you know, I went to U of I, so he, he's from Pi Side, so I got to send a shout out to all my guys. Who went to U of I to accuse them? Uh, we we let you know. If it's a good thing Cam wasn't there when I was there. You know we used to we was in our brawling days. Cam was a big dude. I would have been ducking him, right? <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> I'd be like, oh no, you take. Actually, though, I did have Kevin Hardy. So, I, I, <laughs> hey man, shout out to Kevin Hardy too, man. He was one. He was clearly a gentleman. Um, Cam. So this bill, House Bill forty eight sixty five. What is going on and what do we need to do? How can we help this? How do we get it out of committee? Do we need to come down there? I mean, y'all didn't give us a lot of time, but tell us what we need to do. So, so, so a few things, uh, Mays and Todd. I, I think one thing is making sure that you call your, your state representatives, right, uh, no matter who they are. So there are 22 members of the House Black Caucus. Uh, I'll be meeting, uh, we'll be meeting as a caucus later on today. Uh, and, you know, this will come up as a topic, and I think that uh, everybody will get on board. Um, but I think what we do often is that we think if we don't have a black representative, we don't need to call them about black issues, and that's wrong. If you live in Beverly, if you live in Evanston, if you live in Chicago Heights, and your representative ha- happens to not be black, call them anyway. Call them and tell them that this is important to you because you are their constituent, you are their voter, um, which is very important to us, obviously, um, especially in, in this season. Uh, the second thing I would say, if you can go online and fill out slips, uh, slips that say that you support this bill. Um, you know, the louder we can be on social media, the louder that we can be kind of in the atmosphere, uh, the better it will be for this bill. Well, let me back up, back up, back up. So, to slip, what, what, what Representative Buckner is asking you to do is go to ILGA.gov. ILGA.gov. Scroll down, there's a box on the left. You want to put in there HB 4865. When you put that in, the bill will come up, and at the top of the screen, there will be a a tab that you can click to witness for it, to say you are supporting it. We need you to do that. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And and then if, if you if you if you have the time. Uh, you know, you're always welcome to come to come to your capital here in Springfield mm. and to let your voices be heard and your, and your face uh, be shown. Let me know. I'll, uh, you know, give me a give me a call if, if there are folks who are coming down. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Um, anybody we can have in in the in the room will be uh, appreciated. Uh, and Todd and Mason, I just I just want to um, highlight something real quick. Uh, we know that tomorrow is March 4th, right? Yes. Uh, March 4th is the day that Chicago was incorporated. Um, so tomorrow, the day that we are having this this committee hearing on this bill, I think it holds a special place in the heart of many of us because this day that the city of we love was incorporated, but it also happens to be uh, the only day on the calendar that is a command, right? March 4th. All right, so I want folks, when we talk about this bill, let's March 4th. Let's, let's talk about oh, oh, moving our people 4th. in the right direction. That's March 4th, man. This is, this is what this is all about. Oh, that's so deep. He said March 4th. So look, I'm, I'm first of all, to my listeners out there, I need a bus. I need a bus, not a school bus. I need one of them big old fancy cushy buses. I need all the rich people that be calling me up talking about what they doing. I need somebody to help me purchase the bus. And then I need to fill the bus. Because I'm saying we could get up out of here 10 o'clock. We could be down in Springfield in time for the hearing. We could visit the state reps, let the Black Caucus know what time it is, and then get back on the bus and be back in town for you. Well, you won't be back in town to watch your shows, but you will be back. Um, 
Representative Bubner, tell me what the climate has been as it relates to people in the committee. Do we need to be calling people on the committee today? Or that is also yes, that is that is also important. You can find that also on ILGA I L G A dot gov. The eleven members uh, of the committee. Uh, I know a few of them off the top of my head, but I, not enough to rattle them off and, and, and be succinct with it. Um, uh, as I said, Representative Justin Slaughter from the 27th uh, House District is the vice chair on the committee and the only African American, only black person on that committee. Uh, Justin and I are going to talk a little bit later this, uh, this morning about uh, what he can do to try to wrangle up uh, the folks on that committee. But we're going to be having some conversations. But if you can go uh, on the website, the name of the committee is the State Government Administration Committee. We'll that's post all that on Facebook. We'll post on the, G, the WVON website, and you'll be able to get I'll create some memes and some graphics that we can share. But if you are interested in rolling with us going down to Springfield tomorrow, if you are interested in being a sponsor, helping us get the bus and getting the people down there, if you are a black business owner and you are tired of being lumped in the minority category, Join this effort and help us get this done. Representative Butler, you head, head on over to the Capitol, but we appreciate you. We room for you. And if you ever got a problem, you call the morning show, and we will deploy the team for you. Yeah. It's the Talk Chicago, y'all. We got to get out of here. We'll be back after the traffic news and the weather. The Talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is... Come on, Todd. You want to go? You gotta pick up the kids. Number of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Okay, I don't need the people who could go. I want the people who will go. Huh. You know what? Who knows? Maybe I'll go. I can ask my sister. She loves to pick up the kids. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe Wednesday. Oh. Janine will probably pick up Claire. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Trying to see if I can have a bus waiting to get out of here.
Okay, so they're releasing a new poll saying Kim is pulling away from Conway. Whose poll is it? Uh, her poll. So it's, it's interesting because I feel, but they're saying still a high number of um, undecided. undecideds. And I feel like the undecideds break towards the new person in this case. They do. Um, they almost always break. Towards like if you haven't made a decision up to this point. Yeah. Just put individual, put citizen. Dolores, put citizen. Or what's in it for the black people? We're an organization. So I'm going to tell y'all. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all. I'm looking for partners. I don't, I, In the case of trying to help black folks, I'm not paying nobody to help black folks. I'm not. Like help. You're going to help, help. Right? I help everybody. <laughs> it was me. Everybody want me to pay them. No. I'm looking for y'all to share the What's in it for the Black People Voters Guide in all of your outlets. Will somebody buy the phone to make me go? Ooh! To be girl. Mm-mm-mm. Won't you buy that by the phone? Girl, girl, girl. Gotta get up on your own, girl. Gotta get up on your own. Gotta get up on your own, girl, 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 girl. I wanna know what's on your mind. I wanna find the flame of love. You love me and you care. I'm all alone. Will somebody buy the phone? To can them to make me care. Please don't go. Whatever. Is there something wrong with you? Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Well, maybe it's too good for me. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co host, Ty Stroger. Hey, Ty, Ty, Ty I gotta say. Album? Yes. That was the in effect mode. This was one of my player tapes. Yeah, I can you know, do like that. you put this this in Key Slut, my <laughs> senior year in high school. Oh, yeah, I get a girl in the car be like, You wanna get up on your own, girl? <laughs> Uh, that and that album was like everything was a hit on that. Oh, it was great! And it was like, man, you know what? That was good. You know, I'm gonna start playing like old school music. Hey, did you? Okay, so I'm still trying to figure out who do we listen to? Cause Mayor Lori Lightfoot told us that there was no coronavirus. She was recruiting us to come to Chinatown, and I'm turning on every channel. I'm looking at people getting carted off, ding, wheeled ding, off. Ding, they ding. are canceling. So look, Facebook was like, we ain't going to South by Southwest. Yeah. Yeah, Todd, it's kind of crazy, man. 
um, no. coronavirus is all over. I'm not uh, much of a chicken, but I'm not going to. Bonk, 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 bonk. I'm bonk. not going to Chinatown right now. Bonk, bonk. Man, you wouldn't get the cheap. You know, when you go to Chinatown, you got to eat whatever with the head on. <laughs> like, I'd be like, what kind of chicken is this again? Can I see his head? If I feel like rice, I'm going to either <laughs> eat Mexican or Panda Express. <laughs> yeah. All right, Todd. Um, let me tell you. Um, I am going to take a few calls uh, on State Representative Cam Buckner's bill, forty-eight sixty-five. I'm hey, can I? So look, I'm I'm doing my public solicitation. I need someone to sponsor a bus. Well, not not a school bus, a luxury bus, to take us to Springfield tomorrow, where we will go and vociferously advocate for black people. To be pulled out of the minority lump. Now, I'm going to tell you this. There will be plenty of rich people who will be listening. Who will benefit from this. Right? Because if we're able to do this. Then we can have our contracts set aside. Right? Mm -hmm. For black people. And we don't got to always worry about the white women. Taking our lunch or the Latinos. But, that's the thing. Oh, did everybody hang up? Alright, well let me take Third Good. Third Good, John Talk Chicago. 1690. Uh, blessings. I, I faithfully listen every morning, um, but this is a topic I had to take the time and pull over and call in. First of all, let me applaud uh, your leadership and President Georgia uh, with this vision in terms of a, uh, and the representative, of course, for his courage, his vision. Uh, the, the point is clear. We have uh, the, the, the doors that were initially to be opened on behalf of black people as a result of uh, slavery, as a result of Jim Crow. We've, we've lost in terms of being put in with those women uh, and others allegedly disadvantaged groups. I have nothing against them. But clearly that which it was intended to do has not come to pass. So I support this legislation. I missed the freedom ride, but I'm getting ready to, I want to take a bus ride to Springfield. I'm going to set aside my my calendar and i make another point i was in the judge's courtroom uh, one day and in and it was the irish judge and in his court uh, rather in his chambers he had a photograph that said it was a post of an old discriminatory post that said no irish and no dogs allowed and what's the point the irish were discriminated against when they first came here they were the great unwashed catholics but they pulled together unapologetically and consolidated political power and gain control of public contracts, public jobs. Why can't we do the same? Those who have been uh, the heirs and the, uh, the, the, the fighting the legacy, if you will, of slavery. So I support this bill. Um, if ain't nobody going to do for us, for us. So uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Again, I support uh, the, this legislation, and I would be very much interested in um, the, the plan to get down there by a bus. Additionally, if you could repeat the, um, the the mechanism by which we we support the bill online, Got we need to do this more often. Uh, that would be very very helpful. So bless you and your vision. Bye. Thank, thank you, brother Thurgood. Man, I see brother Thurgood all the time. His name ain't really Thurgood, but I finally realized he's a real lawyer. So he was being Thurgood like Thurgood Marshall. Uh -huh. See, he, 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 he's good. He's and he is a great scholar. I ran into him and his mom at Costco the other day. But let me tell you, uh, third good, it is rich people in Costco. Uh, uh, shoot, poor people in Costco. They just buy in bulk. ILGA dot gov. I need everybody to go to ILGA dot gov. On the left hand column, once you get there, there is a box where you can insert the house bill number. Insert HB four eight six five. Up will pop the legislation, and at the top of the page, there will be witness. You can click the tab as a witness. Now, it's going to tell you that you are in support of this bill. That is what they, they read your name into the record at the committee hearing and saying, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person are in favor of it. So you can register as an individual. If they say an organization, feel free to put what's in it for the black people or whatever black organization you participate. Or you can put individual. Okay? Let me go to Queen. Queen on Talk Chicago, 1690. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Um, yesterday, and God bless you, yesterday I was listening uh, and there was a comment uh, regarding uh, the contributions made by Congressman Bobby Rush. 
And I just wanted to uh, shed some light on the, the legislation huh? that was just passed after 17 years uh, uh, through the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives. We're not talking about Bobby Rush, but go ahead, uh, do it quick. They just, the U.S. Congress just passed his bill against lynching. It's a federal offense. And he, it took the death of Emmett Till and it took 17 years for Bobby Rush to get that bill through the house and it has passed so I just wanted to just add that as one of his major contributions to the cause of civil rights thanks Queen uh, didn't, when did Emmett, Smith, Emmett Till get killed? like in the 60s was it time? Well, let, let me just tell you that sometimes it is very hard to get anything through that deals with the minorities. So let me just, I guess, you know, I always be thinking like, you know, I always think about campaign mailers. Hey, I wrote that, I was typing it, and I typed down what I said there. Okay. Hey, that was kind of cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I'm not That's not what I meant to type, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. So I, I, you know, I always feel like, you know why the lynching, you know, I'm going to tell you why the lynching bill became so important right now. Yeah, do I, can I say my theory on the lynching bill and why all of a sudden it became like a top priority? Because you had to explain why in the hell you were supporting the guy who said that he was giving the police to lock you up, the right to lock you up before they lynched you. See, I'm going to tell you, the Bloomberg move for Bobby Rush was economically wise, but I think it, it gave him a hit in his space, in his Black Panther freedom fighter space. Like, wait, you signing up with the guy with stop and frisk. And so oftentimes, Todd, as I tell you, legislation gets pushed to the forefront to give you cover for the bull you're doing. And in my case, in my estimation... Oh, I bet this has been... He's been I bet he's been working on it, but I bet it got to the top of the heat when he got that Bloomberg money. Because I'm saying, murder ain't never been legal. Right? Murder's never been legal. No, but lynching has always been a big thing. And Todd. Uh, I remember telling you, uh, maybe it's almost been a year, mm -hmm. about a movie with, uh, oh man, one of my favorite guys. Shoot. I see his face, I can't think of his name. But it was about lynching, and he gives a speech about how 300 people have been lynched. And, of course, he was a white actor, because, you know, I would have been a black actor in 1940. White people wouldn't watch the movie. But it spoke to the problems of lynching and how people have ignored it for years okay forever i shouldn't say years forever so i guess i'm i'm with you on that i guess my question is you can we gonna pass the bill for lynching but ignore the person that's throwing you in the j yeah i i'm gonna tell you I, yeah, i'm with you he's not gonna win huh <laughs> <laughs> uh, bloomberg uh, he ain't gonna win but you you still gotta cover that ass you got that, that blint and a lynching bill like it's hard to argue with a lynching bill like it's hard to say Right, it's hard to say. No, that's not true. Well, I, if you I, white, it's not hard. Right, like, well, we already got laws for that. That's what they used to tell you. Well, I would say that too. If right now, I'll be like, you can't tell me that. You can't be simultaneously pushing Mike Bloomberg and telling me I'm in the fun. It just don't work. Top Chicago, 1690. More of the morning show with Maze Jackson coming up. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, share the broadcast. You got the camera, Todd. I mean, no, Sonya and Todd, y'all got the camera. Here, let me give y'all. Sonya and Todd, y'all got the camera. Uh, I'm ready for my clothes, though. Wait a hey. Can you play that? Yeah, the more you know, the more you, uh, you read about Mike Bloomberg, the more you're like, eh, I don't see it. I don't see too many of your policies that you've had in the past that really had a good effect on black people. I think uh, I think the Biden Brian Mullins I saw who said spend uh, some money creating a creating some businesses, uh, some manufacturing in the suburbs, south suburbs, western suburbs, and, and he's right. 
all these punitive laws without the money going to neighbors didn't mean a thing still happened. One thing it did was make white people feel safe and make black people have to move. Too often we talk about the symptoms and not the real I'm all problem, alone. which is more or less capital. NBA said, "Don't share, no, don't say, shake no more hands. No signing, no autographs. Don't take nobody marker. No high fives. No, you're only supposed to bump elbows. Yeah, Michael Drayton, you could donate the cost of the bus." Got the Midas touch. Everything I touch turns to gold. I got the Midas touch. So. Everything I touch turns to gold. I got the Midas touch. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mary Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Uh oh. Look, we done woke up the. Look, y'all. This is not the Bobby Rush show. I done woke everybody up, but Sonya. Alright. Um, okay, I'm gonna go here, though. I'm gonna go here. Play my clip. Play my clip. You can just take the description and Xerox it and pass it out to all the cops. They are male, minority, 15, 25. Keep it all the cops and minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the, the way you get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall and, and frisk them. He said kill the lynching, but throw, you can still throw them against the wall and frisk them. Let me go to the phone line. Josh, show on top of Chicago 16 Maze, you mean to tell me that I was walking around like with the ability to just be grabbed up and lynched and nobody would do anything? Yeah, I mean, it was a law, man. That you know, you, that, that's, that's how it worked, man. And I'm, I'm saying, saying they don't. Have been a, a, at least a hate crime? Oh, no, it's a hate crime. I mean, I think it's still a hate crime. What you trying to say, Josh? Help me understand, brother. Well, I mean, like, what exactly does this bill accomplish? Like, are people, I, I feel like we haven't been lynched since the... Oh, no, Trayvon Martin got lynched. Trayvon, Trayvon Martin got lynched. So did Mike Brown. Uh, and, and, and what's my man, uh, who was... I can't breathe. What was his Eric name? Eric Garner. Eric Garner. No, oh, Eric okay, Garner. Okay. So now, okay. I'm just saying, we, because I, I, I'm with you, Josh. We passed the law to end lynching, which I'm, I'm not against. But then the same person who passes the law against lynching s supports the guy who says this. You can just take the... 
are set to pass it out to all the cops. They are male minorities, 15 to 25. Keep for all the cops and minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the, the way you get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall and, and frisk them. See, I, I see where you're going here, Bobby. See, that means you see you being facetious, too. See, you being like me. You Are you suspect of this anti-lynching bill as some sort of cover for supporting this guy who said he's he ain't going to lynch you, but he is going to take you and throw you up against the wall? I most certainly do. Uh, <laughs> Bloomberg is going around buying his way into this election, and I see right through. Thank you, Josh. Can I tell you how crazy Bloomberg is? Not crazy. How gangster he is with it? He was like, he's got a commercial now that says, my debate performances don't make a difference. Go with the guy who gets it done. So let me tell you what I think is happening in Bloomberg's campaign. Bloomberg campaign, the campaign workers, they got them a sweet lick. They like, we going to keep propping this dude up. We going to tell him. Because, you know, the campaign consultants right now are cleaning up on Bloomberg. <laughs> uh, cleaning up. I bet you they got five million each off this campaign. I bet you. I bet you. Um, but Todd, I want to talk about this race in a second. Um, where where is everything at? But I'm gonna take Gloria's call and then we're gonna spend the rest of the time on Super Tuesday. Gloria, you on top of Chicago 1690. Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. I think they got your number. Gloria. Gloria you going? Gloria says she lives in the seventh ward and they changed up her polling place too. All right, so Todd, I guess my question now becomes, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. What does Super Tuesday mean now? So let, let me just, when we started talking about this yesterday and we were cutting the promo, um, we were talking about the fact that um, Super Tuesday, and we talked to Amisha yesterday, Super Tuesday is so many primaries. Um, but er, people dropped out. So uh, Pete, Mayor Pete dropped out, Amy Klobuchar dropped out, which are the cons are the moderates. Are the moderates uh, coalescing behind Joe Biden in an effort to stop Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg? Do you think? This is a good question, Mason. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think there's something to that, uh, but you know, Super Tuesday is also one of those things where you say to yourself you say self self if i'm gonna have any say and have any appointments timing is everything right so i need to get out at the right moment and i think uh for the candidates who dropped out they were like you know what i ain't winning i need to back the strongest candidate so I have some kind of say in the future. Yes, because they had to cut a deal with them. Do you know they was like, all right, get out. And then when you get out, they promised them something, right? You know, they came to them and said, because you, when they get, like, I, I used to be an expert at getting people out the race. Uh -huh. And the way I did it, usually, the usually way I did it was I found your weakness, and then I brought it to you. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they probably saw their weakness as their strength, because essentially, they could have kept peeling away from Biden. And so Biden probably had to give them something oh, yeah. to get out. And so don't be surprised if they are running some super PAC, if they are um, become some sort of appointment or something right. that positions Secretary them in the future. Secretary of Department of... I mean, think about Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete played this good. Because Mayor Pete is going to go... Mayor Pete anymore, right? What? No, he's still Mayor Pete. Oh, he's still the mayor? So he's still the mayor. He's going to leave. He's going to be the mayor of South Bend then after he leaves that, he's going to get a job that can position him potentially to be the president in the future. Correct. Because he's just a young buck. Yep. Amy Klobuchar is probably going to be like Secretary of State or something. Not Secretary no, of State. No. no, I'm just being serious. Yes. But she'll get a job. But I think all of them will get a job and they'll be viable players in the party. Right. Now, the key is what happens with Bloomberg. Right? Because so I think this. So right now tonight, in my estimation... Bloomberg, okay, if I was betting man today, I'm still betting that Donald Trump beats the field, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm bet but if we're just staying in the Democratic pile right now, Joe Biden has to force Mike Bloomberg out of the race. 
Mike Bloomberg has enough money to sustain, but there's got to be a point when his ego gets out of the way and then you get boiled down to a two-person race between Bernie and Joe. See, I don't feel like Mike Bloomberg is ready for the presidential stage. I don't think I think there's something to the fact that he did not participate in any of the activities. And now, the only two times that we've seen him besides his commercials, he was an utter failure. Utter. So, I mean, Todd, think about when you're so good, when you're so rich, that you know you were a terrible failure, and you put it in the commercial and say, but don't worry about that, because I'm still the guy that's got more money than everybody. Yes, that's, that's why, why Super Tuesday is, is important for, uh, for Bloomberg. He doesn't have to do great. He doesn't have to win. He just has to make a, a decent showing. To say, well, I can throw another four hundred million at this and, and reach in his pocket. Yep, and reach in his pocket and Probably still be his back pocket for that. Right, and four hundred million, man. He still ain't <laughs> think about that, man. Think about when you say I could spend five billion dollars and not even hiccup. Oh my God, I can't imagine. I mean, but think about this: the president. Remember when the presidential standard went to a billion? Man, that's a lot of money. I mean, think about this: George Bush won with like five, raised five hundred million. Think about. And he was a prolific fundraiser. Yeah. Think about when the Obama team and the bundlers and all of this stuff, there's so much money now. And, and Bloomberg makes it all go away. Because if you read, Joe Biden was like, I had $18 million, one of my best fundraiser nights. And Bloomberg was like, yeah, I spent that on my other mistress. Yeah. <laughs> Could you look in my bottom drawer for me? <laughs> could, you, uh, could you look in my sock drawer, in my change drawer? <laughs> right. Hey, y'all, it's Chicago 1690. When we come back, let's talk about Super Tuesday uh, and what will happen after tonight. Live from the WBON Newsroom. Gloria, Gloria, I think they got your number. Gloria, I think they got the alias. Take a moment, share the broadcast. John St. Pro, welcome to the morning show. How did you find us, John St. Pro? What up, Kathy Wiley? What up, Randy Spann? Okay, I swear to God, I gotta have a a a, lot, a meet and greet to just meet all of the names. 
She's the best traffic person on TV. Hmm. Her face, her her Instagram posts are so positive. And she is like such a nice person in person. Yep. Gloria You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stelger. Hey, Todd. Uh, we are talking about the elections. I'm, I'm over here giggling. He's like, <laughs> Todd, what, you know what's funny to me? What? Why do people feel like they can be disrespectful for, like, years, and then when they in trouble, they feel like now you're supposed to be responsive to them? Like, we should talk. Well, you know, it wasn't personal, Mays. It wasn't personal when it was me. I didn't, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't mean to break a no, you know, couple of ribs. I mean, you did that, right? I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to be part of the conspiracy to hurt your family. No. But now, that's all bygones. Let them be bygones. Oh, it made you always be tripping. Yeah, forget about that. Forget man. about that stuff. Come on, man, let's be bigger. You know that hold your head up. Uh, <laughs> heal. <laughs> let's be bigger after your challenge. Let, let you, let's be bigger after everybody get through all the obstacles. 
All right, Todd, I'm talking about this. <laughs> this presidential race. Um, Super Tuesday, man. Do you think Bloomberg makes it out? Do you think, like, at the end of this, or does this, like, how rich do you have to be to to, uh, to not understand when you suck? I need to, to actually look and see what the 14 <laughs> states are to kind of make a, Texas is one of them, and just Texas itself, which is, no, you know, it's like five states. All right, Bloomberg, though, in Texas? It's Texas. <laughs> how does the Democrats do this? It, it, They're not, starting to move because the Latinos. Yeah. So, so I guess in this kind of thing, there's no all or nothing states, right? right. No, it's no such thing as all or nothing anymore. Oh. Jesse Jackson fixed that. Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, you know, if he can can uh, garner some, he can say, "Well, look at this. I got momentum." Is Bloomberg now the? Um, is he? Is Bloomberg Ross Perot in reverse? Huh. Right, it's like Bloomberg. The reason, and let me ask a question: Do you no, think that was a Ross Perot had no history? Yeah, I hear you, but Ross Perot still commanded a, a hunk of the vote. Yeah, he did. And and that was what it wasn't. Bill Clinton won. Ross Perot ate out of George Bush's pie, and that's to me the same thing that's happening with. Because right now, but you know that happens like every eight years or something. Right. John Anderson did the same thing. Do you think um do you think like the uh the guys that are running for president next time? Oh, what's your name? Nader? He did the same thing. Yeah, 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 I'm saying. It's like the rich people be like, I'm smarter than all y'all. So I'm gonna blow it up for everybody. And then they get to go chill out and be rich and go fly to another country. Oh well yeah, they're, they're, they're still rich, so they do what they want. Man, I'm so, I can't be time I'm rich. I'm gonna do what I want. I'll be around here slapping mugs. I'm gonna be walking in the place like whoosh. I'll pay for that. <laughs> like, I want enough money. I want enough money that when I come in and just jack you, I can be like, I know. you going to sue me. <laughs> look, look, I'm going to do like R. Kelly and just have a settlement fund. Right? <laughs> like, be like. Yeah, but for him, yeah. I don't want that kind of. No, let yeah, me take that back. Right, right, right. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Lewis, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. What's going to happen in this Super Tuesday? And will this be enough to get Bloomberg out? Or who are you with? Bloomberg, Biden? Or do you think that Crazy Bernie. <laughs> crazy Bernie. Crazy Bernie. Hey, hey, I feel like Bernie Sanders is. When I talk to Bernie Sanders, I feel like I'm watching an episode in the barbershop of, of Coming to America. <laughs> What's up, Lewis? Oh, uh, good morning, Todd. Good morning, good May. Good morning. Uh, good morning, May. Good morning, Todd. Good mo- Thank you, Lewis. Get it right, man. This is my show. <laughs> so, hey, Todd, hey. we get a big head. You start talking to him first. You all right? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, but uh, but you're confusing me over here. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We we heard this saying before. This is business. Don't take this personal. Poisonal. I take stuff poisonal. Oh, okay. Now referring to uh, Bloom Bloomberg. Yeah. Okay, that's what he's trying to say. What he did was business, and uh, and don't take it personal. Okay. But he gotta put the words together, Lewis. Lewis, I'm not. I don't have to take it personal. I mean, I honestly could see somebody saying that. But when you like when you talking out your mouth and you sound crazy, like stupid. But, but, but you know what? You know what he's really saying. What he's saying is that he's scared. That if Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren become the president, what will happen is he'll lose his his wealth with that wealth tax and that green uh that that, that new green deal and all this free stuff that they gonna give away uh, that he have to pay for, he'll be back where he where he started at. He'll be he'll be like he just said that if he was black, he wouldn't be rich, you know. And so that's what he's trying to say. And so what happened was when they had that uh, con- when they had that uh, that uh, debate in uh, South Carolina, the Democratic Party was looking for uh, 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 looking for the black vote, and they found out that the black vote was still behind Joe Biden at at sixty percent. And so that's when those three other candidates had dropped out. You know, uh, Steiner, uh, Budig- Budigas. And this other lady, you know. And so what's going to happen is when he goes to Texas, he's going to pick up those delegate, delegates, and that's going to put uh, Bernie Sanders out. Okay. And, 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 and so that's what they're trying to do. I think to they, they are trying to push Bernie. I think they are trying to push Bernie out. Uh, and right. I do think, I'm going to be honest with you, 
I think that thanks, thanks, Lewis. I think that there's a case for Joe Biden to make to Mike Bloomberg to get out of the race and still buy the government. Right? He's gonna be like, I don't got a billionaire. You can run the whole thing, just get out of the way. I just wanna be Trump. Man, there are six hundred and approximately fifty delegates between Texas and California. Ooh. Tomorrow. Ooh. That means today. Yeah, but Bernie's going to get, Bernie is going to get, uh, Bernie and my, oh, Bernie, see, Bernie's going to get the Latinos, though, in Texas and in Mexico, I mean, in, Ch in California. Hmm. So that, to me, says to the party that he's going to get, like, the, because remember, all the Latinos, they want the free immigrant health care and the free everything, right? So Texas, they right there at it. Bernie says, I think all undocumented immigrants should have. I'm just saying, uh, they all should have, uh, uh, they, we should take care of them. What kind of country are we if we're not socialists and we don't take care of people who don't live in our country? I don't know. I, I think you're reading too much. I don't think uh, Latinos pay that much attention. They don't pay that. Close. No, the Latinos, real, the, the ones that are, well, I think if you watch the last two elections, like in, in Nevada and stuff, the Latinos all went that way, like the food service workers, etc. And I think that in Texas... And in California, there are multiple generations of Latinos that are playing the political game. Right. But what I think happens is nobody wants Bernie in the establishment, and Bloomberg gets that he could be the spoiler. So I think if I'm Bloomberg, I leave being the king and be the kingmaker because Joe Biden is, you know, hey man, I'm going to tell you, I was watching Joe Biden on um, Meet the Press. Whew. Slowing down? Slowing down. I had people texting me like, this is hard to watch. Because I think all of the people, like all of the betters, would have assumed Joe Biden. And I still think that we assume Joe Biden. Right. But I'm just telling you, like as a person watching, I'm just telling you, he looks. Like, Bernie looks slow, but he doesn't, like, he does, it seems like Joe Biden is having some senior moments. Right, Bernie still so Bernie's still right. like, hey, hey, come on, the, hey, uh, hey. Because Bernie just said, I'm going to give everything away. You can have it all. Just elect me. Todd, I'm going to tell you, Super Tuesday. I think if Mike Bloomberg don't win one of the big states, see, he's going to win something like Hawaii. And be like, <laughs> I've got a mandate to stay in the race. <laughs> I'll be like, nah, dog, Hawaii don't count. Hawaii don't count. He's going to win like Rhode Island. <laughs> right. Maybe they, they'll win the American Samoa. Ah, the American Samoa. They get the vote? I didn't think they got the vote. Only the citizens that move there. It's Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back to wrap this whole thing up. More of the morning show with Mayor oh, no, Jackson coming up on the talk of Chicago. 1690 W V O N. The uh, the Congressman Bobby. Bobby. They get the vote in the primary. They don't get the vote in the general. Really? Mm -hmm. That's some dumb shit. <laughs> so you can vote in the primary, but judge. But then we're gonna throw that all away. Yeah, no. Last night, couldn't even get an answer. Tried to call. Sitting here with this blank expression. Home and off. Insurance and you could save an average of 20%. It's a better pairing than pineapple and pizza. There's pineapple and pizza? 1 800 farmers for a quote today. That's 1 800 farmer. WVON, traffic and weather now. If you're riding on the Dan Ryan inbound, on the 5th of downtown, you can get a 33 minute view to Seeky Hill Memorial I 80 to the Ryan 26 minutes. Bishop Ford I 80 94 to the Ryan about 20 minutes view. Over on the Stevenson Tri State to Lake Shore Drive, it should take you about 31 minutes both directions. Eisenhower Road, 390 to the Old Post Office, 57 minutes in, 37 out. 
Kennedy O'Hare to downtown, about a 49 minute ride. Outbound 36 minutes and Lakewood Drive northbound. Market to Monroe, 21 minutes southbound out of this to Monroe. We're looking at a 33 minute trip. It is currently 33 degrees, sunny, mild, and windy today. Tonight, that was down to the Let's look at traffic and weather. Bring it to the next meeting, Lunia. Yeah. I'm 16 a.m. Who you think is disrespectful, Constance? Me, oh me, a stoma can be. Day after day, I continue to be. No G's. Mm -mm -mm. I can only be, be, be me. T D C D emoji. Okay, Jerome White is a troll. It's a change from Jerry White. Don't be getting distracted. Me, be me. TV. CD. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host. Too. That's the opera version. Showed you. <laughs> Ty, uh, I'm going to take these last two calls and then we're going to wrap this bad boy up, okay? All right, so let's start with Ronnie P. Ronnie P, what's going to happen Su Super Tuesday tonight, my brother? Mm -hmm. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning, morning, Ronnie P. From the yeah, south Ryan side. You on the south side. But listen, let me tell you something. First of all, the uh, Super Tuesday, it is where the majority of the state cast their boat and they will determine who would get the nomination? Well, let me explain something to you. The establishment, seeing that they're going to keep it going by paying off these people who want to let Bernie get in there. Well, the young group, they're not with that one. You know, Bernie is the man. But, again, you know, the establishment is really pushing hard trying to get done what they want to do because I can't imagine why anybody want to vote for uh, uh, Joe or uh, Joe who everybody now know his corruption and his son who knew nothing about the job making fifty thousand dollars doing it. What are you talking about Ronnie P? What is this velvet? <laughs> <laughs> hey don't hang up on me. Come on hurry up Ronnie I gotta close. I need you to do this I gotta get a letter to you. I need you to do the uh, May's four year commentary. That need to be spoken several times. Matter of fact, maybe for a month. It was so good, so good. Never heard nothing as good as that. Ever. You did it good. You people need to know it, particularly those that didn't hear it. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you, Ronnie P. Let me go to Reggie. Reggie now. Reggie now. Reggie now. Real quick, I, I respect both of you guys big time. I wrote with you guys, and I was there when Ken Duncan got screwed, and uh, I lost my job. But real quick, who are you supporting for the uh, committee man race? Because your your opinion means a lot. And uh, not only the committee man race, uh, what are you going to do as far as all your enemies that I know screwed you? What are you going to do, and how can you walk around them, especially at Thirty First Street, knowing that you got to be a God loving man? I uh, take it off the air. You know what, Reggie? Um, I'm going to tell you like this. Um, I've been going back and forth with this, right? Like, um, so Reggie is, I mean, a lot happened during that Ken Duncan thing. And I'll be honest with you, I suppressed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I just buried it all because 
if I would have concentrated on it, it would have made me go crazy. Now, I will tell you that I had some very extreme thoughts during that election. Nothing crazy like jumping off of a building, but I really was lost. And I really think, um, even like when I was telling you all about the story about being at the um, auto show and somebody feeling like they could throw an elbow or doing all those things. Right. I'm trying to find the balance, y'all. I'm, I like, and one of the things that I do on the radio show that people probably say I shouldn't is I'm human on the air. Like I tell you, like if it happened, I tell you. I don't try and be like I'm trying to hold this, and I don't know. Like I really don't know how because I really never confronted this issue, right? I never really did. And now that I'm confronting it, and I see the people, and I see them, and I. You know, I think right now the best revenge is to continue to build an army yeah. and then be able to see them on the battlefield. Because I know what they got in their crew, right? And so for the last four years, I've been building, right? Building a team. So when you look at all these Facebook Live broadcasts, it's all part of a reason. It's all, you know how y'all know the story now? It's like the way y'all know everything, those same people got to look at you. So those same people that were telling the stories that were saying, Man, like I've been consistent with y'all for four years. And before that, I ain't changed. I'm straight up. I don't lie. I tell you what's happening. Good, bad, ugly, when I'm right, when I'm wrong, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so now what is happening is all of those lies that were easy to perpetrate. Oh, he's a Republican. Oh, he's, well, now they ain't really got nothing. And now the question is, what are you doing and what have you done for your community while you pointing fingers, talking about who's a sellout, when the reality is, and I'm going to tell you over the course of four years, you can tell by the way the calls are shifting. You can tell by the way people are operating. You can tell by the red, black, and green flags that are hanging when people who were against you can't stop you in their own building. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep on investing and building rapport with the people because I think where, 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 where I have recognized that not my power but my strength comes from, it comes from the people. Like there were many days when I could have took the bag or I could have just gave up and it has been black people that have consistently pushed me and even when they come up and they attack and they do things and they come against my family, you know what happens Ty? What? Inevitably somebody black steps up you know people have come against me and i don't i don't like y'all i don't pretend to be a hood a thug none of that stuff no more none of it <laughs> i don't no i used to revel in being a tough guy and having i have absolutely not one tough bone in me anymore but can i tell you what happens every time i have been under attack there have been other people who have stepped up and stood up and stood in the gap Mm -hmm. And so in the time when I was weakest, when I was questioning everything, there was the people who stood up and said, you ain't crazy. Like, you know, I was looking at a lot of stuff. And even as I was talking about what happened with um, the Ken Duncan thing, like, I don't have any ill will towards Julianne Stratton. I don't. I don't. I don't. I really don't. I, mean, I, I, I think that if I was given that opportunity, I would have taken it. It's not, those aren't the things that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things that happen in association with it. To somebody that I helped. You know, I, the people that came against me were the same people that asked me to help run their campaigns, help raise their money, and all of it went away. So now when I look at y'all, I have no fear in my heart. Because guess what I know? The people. I'll be with the people. And I think for... 20 years in politics, I never learned that. It was only after trying to be allied with the politicians that I realized that the politicians weren't where you needed to be if you wanted to survive. Because they go with the wind. They throw you under the bus because, shoot, I'm glad it ain't me. I can't tell you how many people's like, I'm glad it wasn't me. That's why the six people that stuck with me gonna stick with me forever. Good, bad, ugly. You did? So, uh, my brother, the way I deal with it is, it's like every single time you make a call like that, they walk around in fear. They like, dang, they don't, we, that stuff we tried didn't work. This brother been fighting for us, and if you fighting against them, what are you doing? Who are you fighting against, really? Because real talk, you can't really talk about, I mean, I got to eat. But every fight that I have is for somebody else, not myself. 
And that's real. And I think as long as you fight for your people, your people will fight back for you. You know who taught me that? Who? Dorothy Tillman. Mm-hmm. Hey, so for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Sonya Escobar, the music conductor of the Soul Plane, for my co host, to oh, that's the opera version. I am the host of the WVOA Morning Show, asking every day what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said, we out of here. Peace. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is 1690. I can only be, be, be me.